Good night, Barbados. Good night, Barbados. Oh my goodness, it's great to be back. Y'all, it's great to be back. It's great to be back. How is everybody doing? This is Wednesday, the 17th of April, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on the dot here on and over 100 persons already signed on. You ready? You ready? This is the Marcia Week show and we are coming to you live from St. Philip, Barbados. Beautiful St. Philip, Barbados. Lots of breeze right now and did you all see that sun today in Barbados with the rainbow around it who saw that sun with the rainbow around it oh my goodness that is beautiful this is beautiful 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 it's just a good good sign it is saying to us that something great is going to happen in Barbados and that guess what the unseen hand is there guiding us and we're going to be fine we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Wow, it's a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure seeing everybody. Let me just win, um, take the time. Yeah, that's it right there. That's it right there. <laughs> that's it right there. Listen, 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 listen. There is, how many of you all saw it? Let me see if anybody saw that. Um, and, and who saw it? Who saw it? Who saw it? Ah, uh, yes. Ah. Uh, Yes, yes, people saw that, saw that, and that is a sign for us. Guys, we are on the right track. Opposition, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep fighting. They keep the hope alive. Keep hope alive. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, so let me just welcome everybody that's on. Um, you know, I, lo I love to welcome you all. I love to let you know that we appreciate you, Nigel Carrington. You were the first on um, from 4.51 p.m. Uh, good evening the law to the loyal opposition. I'm looking forward to a great show tonight. And you will. You will get your books or your phones or whatever you take notes because it's going to be quite interesting tonight. Cecilia Miller, good evening. Locked on and waiting from 4.58. From 4.58, Cecilia. Remain blessings, loyal patriotic opposition, where there is no vision, the people perish. What is our vision for BIM? That these charlatans with sweet lies must go. Opposition, rescue and restore BIM, forward march. What is the vision for BIM? That's the question, people. Um, John Lane is saying locked on and just waiting. Uh, Juni Rock, Juni Rock says good night. And she's the one said she saw me planting yams and potatoes <laughs> all the way from the UK. She was watching me planting. Junie, welcome. Galbiz, welcome with Galbiz. Great to be with you again, Galbiz. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for coming out and supporting um, the show Speak Life, which was just uh, such a powerful experience. Thank you. Diana Husbands, how are you doing? I miss you all. Oh, my goodness. Noel again. Yes. Good night from up north. Ah, oh, and he's asking, where is the government of Barbados getting its monies from? $5 million for so the updating the oysting, oysting for ICC cricket. $50 million for, oh, I tell you, and the hospital, the hospital, we can't get even treatment. They have said that uh, most um, operations, surgeries can't, can't occur in Barbados at this point. Um, you know, um, it's just a matter of priority, right? Emerson Bob, Victoria's Green. Good night, Emerson. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Euseline King. Good night. Good night. This Charlene. Charlene. <laughs> that's a, that's a, it's a you know, the, 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 with the Jamaica with the kickers, the Chinese film, Charlene. Okay. And um, Sir Alfred from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, NYC. Good night, good night. Just in time, good night. Guys, are you sharing? Are you sharing and are you liking? Are you sharing and are you liking? Tonight is going to be very explosive, you all. Are you sharing? Are you liking? Uh, Sandra Franklin, oh my Lord, good night. How are you? How are you doing? Wonderful. Owen Hines, good to see you. Uh, Winston Clark, good evening, Winston. How are you doing? Um, how are you doing, Winston? Um, James Harding, good evening, good evening. 
And um, Wilson asking if we notice that we're paying more tax than than you are for water on your water bills. Huh, interesting one. Um, send me a copy, Winston, show it to me. FX Trading, oh, wonderful. Hasbra, wonderful, wonderful, guys. Sharon H, good, good, good. I hope I can call as many names. Tracy Barrow, Keith Cliff, good night. Doriel Clark, good night. Pauline Maynard, good night. Don Reed, hey Don, good night. Simply Patriotic, good night. Wayne Austin, good night, Wayne. Oh my Lord, Cynthia Mon, good night. Sandra Brewster, Joy and Faith, good night. Pete Way, good night, Pete Way. And my namesake, Marcia, good night. Good night, good night, good night. Terry Carrington, good night. Sandra Carter, good night. Victoria Screen, good night. A special good night to you. Patrick Elliott, good night. Please share, share, share. This is a good time to share because when it starts going hot, you don't want to stop and share. So share now. Beverly Prescott, good night. Wayne Austin, good night. Everton Hunt, good night. Oh, my Lord. Sharon H., good night. Oh, Trevor Stewart, good night. Born again, good night. Clive Osborne, how are you? Good night. Elaine's Rivers, good night. Tammy. Hey, Tammy. Good night, Marcy. Good night. Oh, Lord. Judy Fan Clark. Judy Fan, how are you? Good to see you. Colin Clark. Pauline Rollins. Paul Rollins, sorry. Mark Boyce. Hey, good night, Mark. Good, ma good night. Ann Welch. Yes, Alwyn says she saw the ring. Marlene Marshall. Rachel Thornhill. Oh, my Lord. Good night, folks. Marion Griffith. Good night. Oh, Lord, there's so many of you. I can't call all the names now. Agnes and Ag Agnes Shepard, not Grant. Edwin Price, good night. Good night. How are you doing, guys? It's good to be back and good to see everybody. Um, and we want to thank uh, Dr. Ferdinand Nichols for doing such an amazing job. You know, when I when Dr. when he's sitting in the seat, I could just go and do the other things I have to do because he's on point, he's full of passion, full of energy, you know, and um, I just I just really, really um, grateful for a great team, for a great team, wonderful. Clive Osborne say, I share in like mad, that's what everybody needs to do, sharing like the mad. <laughs> Natasha Hope, good night. Julian Elliott, good night, good night. No, guys, it's time, it is time. And it is time for the national anthem, all right? So, you know, we stand at attention wherever you are. If you're driving, obviously, you can't do that. You know that, <laughs> all right? But you're home and you're, you're laying on the bed and you're watching not in the hospital. Get up off the bed and we're going to stand at attention, all right? Yes, here we go. The national anthem. <laughs>
That's right. That's right. That's right. The loyal sons and daughters. And that's who we are. And that's why we are logged on. Every what? Sunday at 7. Every Wednesday at, um, every Monday at 7. Every Wednesday at 7. Every Friday at 7. Because we are loyal. We're loyal sons and daughters. We log on. And these panelists come on. And they share and they research and they spend hours because of our loyalty to Barbados. The loyal sons and daughters. We know we know nothing else. This is what we do, and we do this for this beautiful country called Barbados. Anybody happy to live in Barbados? Yes, we happy to live in Barbados. Didn't have my flag tonight. You know, uh, my first time back and I didn't have didn't put it in the right place where it is supposed to be. But, you know, you know, I love this country and, you know, you love it, too. And we're going to stand together and be that opposition. You know, there, there are people who say, what's the point? What's the point? Remember, remember that before we had uh, a leader of the opposition, we had us, the people of Barbados. All of us, 260 something thousand, they say of us. We understood the assignment. We understood that we were the opposition. Before we had oppositional senates, opposition senates, senators, opposition senators, let me correct myself. We existed. And I want to say to us, please. Let us not drop the ball now because we believe we have a leader of the opposition and we have um, opposition senators. Absolutely not. We're going to pull up our bootstraps and we're going to, you know, gird up ourselves, tighten that belt, put on our, 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 arm, our army clothes, our fatigues or whatever, and we are going to battle. And we battle for this nation. We're going to stamp out um you know corruption and call for transparency and accountability we're going to continue to ask questions of our government because we put them there they came and they asked us for votes they begged us they knocked on our doors some of you they gave you money they paid you <laughs> we're going to stand up barbados and we're not going to back down We've come too far. We think about the latest thing, the cyber crime bill. Uh, right now, they're asking us to um, to make submission. Why? Because of a show like this show. Because of what you do on WhatsApp, what you do on your so with social media, how you talk at work, you speak to your people at work. Because of all the other shows that exist, the, the local shows on YouTube. And the ones on Facebook, because of Bongo Lights and, and Lumumba and their and their um their their recordings that go out, all of us together, the Fred Corbins and and the two four six vibes and everybody together, we formed a force. And guess what? We're seeing them having to go and relook things. Don't stop opposition. Don't stop pushing. Keep pushing. And this evening, <laughs> yes, Jillian, we buckle our Jillian says we're gonna buckle our standards and go forward. No backing out or down. None. None. And we're not gonna wait on Mr. Thorne. We're not waiting on Mr. Thorne. He's in there and he's saying what we're saying. We're gonna cheer him on because he can he, he's going in there with our message. But we're not waiting on Mr. Thorne. We're not waiting on no um no no opposition senators. We are the opposition. Please don't forget that. Don't you ever forget that. And so we have with us here, Mr. Rasimbo. <laughs> here I call you Mr. Rasimbo. <laughs> greetings, Rasimbo. my dear. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> let, me, let me take the colonial title off. Rasimbo, Rasimbo. Yes, sir, greetings, how are you Rasimbo. doing? One of my favorite people in the world. How are you? I am good. I am good. You know, I was really, really moved and touched by what you were saying, you know, your opening remarks about the people being the real opposition. I yes. remember when I spoke, you know, on your platform the other day, I was saying the same thing that no matter who is in government, they must be accountable to the people of Barbados, you know, and we have to, you know, 
you know, everyone has a, a right to like who they, they, they like or whatever, but at the end of the day, you know, we have to, to, to seek and push for a better Barbados for all. Yes, 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 most definitely. And that's what you you are actually doing with um with the new um we have an event that is coming off on Saturday, which I actually plan to be there because you know I believe that it is something that is very, very important. Can you share with us about that? Yes, um on on Saturday, which is the twentieth of April, you know, and, and people can research um the day for twenty. You know, and, and the main of that. We are using that day um, to host the first people's forum um, in, re in reference to the cannabis environment in Barbados since the rise of the, the industry, the medicinal industry. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, from its incept and even before, the Rastafari community, myself and others, have been advocating for um, change, more just law. Yeah. You know, within within that particular um, environment, as you know, I have my case going on and things like that. So, what has happened is that since the the advent of the medicinal cannabis industry, every forum, every platform to discuss this thing or to reason about it has been hosted by the government or, you know, or by the university, you know, but not really by the people. So being, you know, people-centered, you know, my organization, you know, my charity, the African Heritage Foundation, we have a, a, a arm of that called Cannabis Barbados, um, who deal with, you know, that really looks into the cannabis climate, you know, and tries to, do what we can do, you know, as you say, be that opposition yes. and that voice, you know, um, for justice within um, within that environment. So Cannabis Barbados has come up, you know, with an event that is called um, Elevating, you know, and through this, we want to look at, you know, various um, aspects of cannabis in Barbados. You know, we want to look at cannabis in CARICOM, um, mm -hmm. Right now, there was a symposium about a month ago, you know, and the rest of the, the islands are looking at standardizing, you know, the allowances of their citizens, you know. Um, it should be like whatever amount of trees, you know, plants throughout the region, you know, and how they're going to deal with allowances with travel to CARICOM. Barbados is nowhere in that conversation because we're not even legally allowed a seat, you know. Um, so there, there are so many aspects of the, the, the cannabis environment, you know, that the government has really held the people to ransom, you know, continues to make our people criminals, you know, and when you look at, um, what it's doing now, you know, we see that it is not really steep in, in health interests or within even, um, any aspect of poverty alleviation for the people. Mm -hmm. You know, the traditional uses of the plant are not even recognized within the medicinal, um, that medicinal industry. So what we're doing is holding, facilitating a platform where the people, anyone can come and have a seat. You know, we have one or two invited guests to speak, such as Marcia, but it is really, you know, for the people, you know, um, the BLP can come, the DLP can come, and I hope that representatives come, you know, and really ground with the people. There are no special invitations going out. You know, a representative for the police can come if, 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 if they want. You know, today um, I got my permission from the police and the, the, the sergeant, whoever called me, you know, seemed to be very glad that this event was happening. You know, he sounded very happy, you know. So, um, you know, it's, it is interesting to see the development of, of what is going on. So we're inviting everyone, you know, to come down. You know, I'm sending out an invitation to the BCLA. I see that you started a talking quick because I know we only have 15 minutes, mass. So in the beginning, you thought about the rainbow around the sun. You know, I held a press conference this morning. And when I came out of the press conference, <laughs> it was level. I saw the reporters looking up and drivers, you know, looking up and I looked up and, you know, I saw the, 
the rainbow around the sun, you know, and I said the same thing. I said, well, this is a blessing, you know, this is power. When yeah. I got home, I got, I got the call from the police, you know, which was my most concerning, you know, aspect of this whole thing because the cannabis event, cannabis related event, mm-hmm. you know, it's an educational forum, you know, but it is, you know, the, 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 the topic, the subject matter um, revolves around cannabis and everything cannabis related to Barbados. Yeah. So yeah. we're inviting everyone here, you know, um, to tell someone about it. It's going to be at Freedom Park on Saturday. You know, um, it starts at 5 p.m. It goes from 5 to 9. You know, you know, we will start speaking about, you know, four to six around that time, give people time to come and, you know, I think so. And as I said, you know, the main thing that I want to stress is that, you know, everyone is invited or anyone can come and have a say. We're asking people to wear green. You know, mm-hmm. we want to start a movement through this this be one of the first um of its kind moving around the island you know we want that the government whatever government is there can recognize the plant and the contribution um of the plant to our society to our region and therein you know make it a national day of recognition you know and we can wear green we're asking people to wear green you know we're mm-hmm. not asking for like a, not any holiday or anything like that but just as for like um, disabled people, you know, people wear different pretty colored socks and thing, you know. Yeah. You know, we're thinking that maybe that four twenty or an agreed upon day, you know, be yeah. the day a national day of cannabis recognition where people wear green. Simple. Yeah. You know, yeah. doesn't so, take so, away so from. So that's symbol. This yeah. April twentieth is recognized all over the world, right? Yeah, it's called four four twenty. You know, it was re- mm-hmm. actually really started in California, I think. Yes. There are different um, schools of thought to how it originated. One school of thought says that 420 was the police code for mm-hmm. um, marijuana use in California. And some, you know, youths um, that used to smoke, you know, would meet at 420. They used to call themselves the Waldos, mm-hmm. you know. So there are different schools of thought. But, but what has happened, you know, some people even say that, for 20 is Hitler, Adolf Hitler's birthday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't know how true that is, but what has happened is that mm-hmm. internationally, 420 has become an officially um, a day of cannabis recognition, you know, yes. in, in, in every way. You know, even in Barbados, you know, there, there are, are small pockets of ones that, that um, pay reverence, you know, or, mm-hmm. or, um, recognize the day, you know, for whatever reason. So, you know, we just on that, on that, you know, and it is interesting, you know, that it's in the month of April, yes. you know, because we're in the season of emancipation and that's what we're really looking for, cannabis emancipation. Mm-hmm. And I want the listeners to, to understand that this is, even though the, the, the subject matter is cannabis, right? the foundation of this, is about our constitutional rights, our human rights. When mm-hmm. Emperor Aile Selassie stood at the League of Nations to ask for justice against an aggressor Italy who was invading his nation, mm-hmm. the UN kept silent. He said to them, he said then, today it is us, tomorrow it will be you. Mm-hmm. Everyone's constitutional rights and human rights should Correct. be fulfilled. So you may say, oh, is Rasta ain't got nothing to do with me, that's them thing. You know, no, it's not about that. I went to your rally and a blessed sister in Lisa, you know, I don't know if she's on or if she's listening, you know, gave me a contribution to my case against the government. That is what really sparked this. Mm-hmm. This woman really has no interest. She doesn't smoke, you know, nothing like this, mm-hmm. you know. So it is really steep in our constitutional right. Remember. When he said the, the, when he was talking about this in Parliament and they passed the Sacrament Act, mm-hmm. the Attorney General got up and said we can no longer continue to violate the human and constitutional rights of these people. Mm-hmm. They know, but they mm-hmm. continue to do so. Mm-hmm. A violation of my rights is a violation of your rights. Yeah. So everybody is. I'm so glad you you said that. Um, Rasimba, 
this event is for everybody. There are people who are saying, well, I don't smoke um, cannabis, but you know what? You heard what he said, the common ground. Let's find what we have in common. The common ground here is justice. It's justice. How, how, why should people now benefit? You know, business people, all kinds of people now benefit from something that, you know, a whole set of people before um, um, years gone by were being locked up for. And with no regard to the, to those people, people who have toiled and, and kept the whole thing alive. And they're still being locked up. And still being locked up. They don't have the right, you're saying, to even carry a seed. No, not a seed, you know, noting that there has there, there, there has been a relaxation by the police because when you walk oh. around them, you would see, you know, people by the side of the road and they have a little spiff and they're working and, you know, but that is beside the point, you know. Legally, you know, on the, you know, on the side of the law books, we are not allowed even a seed. And remember, oh. within that law, the police have a right to send you to the mental for psychiatric evaluation, a police. So, so even in all of this that is happening, we only have another three minutes. I, this is the part of it, the part of it, guys. I want us to to think about because you are going to say, well, it doesn't have anything to do with me. But the the fact that there are up up until now, up until now, it's the police that's using their discretion and not locking up people, right? Yes, yes, it seems so. But it, they have not changed the laws. Not change and once. This, this sounds to me. I wish we had more time because this sounds to me like what has happened with the slave code. So while slavery is abolished, exactly. the slave code is still on the books. Exactly. And this is why we what, what we have to understand. You know, people. This is what we are fighting um against. Distance massive. You know, the the slave code is still on the book, even though slavery is abolished. So the police is giving them an ease, but it, a, a policeman could still send you to the mental for weed. They can yep. still lock you up for, for a little bit, yep. right? So I, I'm saying it's, it will let us be just, let us be right, and let us let us not try to, to, to build an industry on the backs of the Rastafarian, uh, Rastafari community. Yep. It's almost like we ex expect them to be burdens of, of um, beasts of burden. You know, and it's for all, you know, Rastafari has, has borne the brunt, you know, of it, yes, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't only Rastas going to jail, you know, we, yeah. we may have been the majority, <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, mm -hmm. so it is for every Barbadian who wishes to do so, you know, it is for yeah. the freedom to do so if you wish, you know. And, you yes. know, I want to leave by saying, and I said this at the press conference, you know, and this is why we need the people's opposition. You know, there's an African proverb that says, you know, that we plant trees today whose shade we may never sit in. We plant yeah. these trees that our children and our grandchildren, our great -trans great grandchildren can benefit from their shade. You know, we, we fight these battles so our children don't have to. Yes. I have a daughter, I have a grandson. I don't want next year and two years later, you know, or when he grows up, he, ha he has the same battle. If he mm -hmm. chooses to, you know, or not, you know? Correct. So, Correct. So we have to pave a way, you know, we have to pave a way for others. It, is, it doesn't even really about us right now. We have to it's move about, that mentality. It's about justice. It's about justice. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Rasimba, Rasimba, glad that you're on and we will keep putting up the poster throughout the week. Um, every time we come on, because we are about justice and about, you know, what's right. And I think that, um, you know, <laughs> um, and, and, and just so for the person, Calvin is saying that I'm promoting pot smoking. Did you hear me promote pot smoking, um, Rasimba? You heard no, me on no, this no. program promoting uh, pot smoking, but that's, 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 that's people for you. Yeah, you know, you 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 will all always find those. You know, we're not promoting yeah, yeah. smoking; we're promoting, <laughs> you know, liberation for the planet. Yeah, never promote pot smoking. I'm talking about justice. All you right, know, we're talking you about so justice. Yes, yeah, thank you so much, Ras Simba. Thank you, and keep the fight going. God bless you, and I will see you on Saturday. I'll be at that event, and I will keep um pushing the event on the show. God bless. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Good night. Everyone. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye.
folks um it's 7 30 and we are locked on here on the marcia we show and um, we're going to ask you to keep sharing keep liking um let people know that we're on we have a great show lined up um, for you tonight um glenn marie i can see him in, in the um in 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 the green room and he's waiting to come on and he is going to um he's going to educate us you know how it goes with mr murray you better get ready let me just bring him in right now Hi, mr good, murray good evening good evening sir good evening marcia and thanks for the welcome and um good evening all viewers good to be here once again yes sir it's great great um great to have you here tonight and i know you have you know a big topic that you want to talk about you know um i want i want i want work for my people who who is saying that who is saying i want work for my people so mr uh mr Ma mr murray take it away thank you very much uh if, if i might repeat um the, the subject matter to, to refresh the memory of those who might be watching and might not have heard it the topic is work for my people not what you think work for my people not what you think and as they like to say these days as we imitate the american and the and the uh british jargon i would like i would seek to re re deconstruct and reconstruct that which really just means analyze yes. <laughs> but I will, I will get current and get trendy what, um, I believe that, like me, most powerful listening to that and evaluating that topic of face value, taking it all what it's you would assume that there's not that's a very noble, progressive, active, important gesture. Work for my people, I presume it's coming from a government. Yeah. Th that, that was my long held belief, particularly since it has been the role of successive, uh, successive democratic. Socialist governments in Barbados, BLP and DLP, to promote work, to provide work or provide means where work can be generated because we all understand the importance of employment. When, they, when unemployment is high, the country suffers. So not only financially, but emotionally, psychologically, socially, it does something to the, to the fiber of the country. So I, that was my um, initial interpretation of that. Man, until until it comes, we used to hear in manifesto, you're going to raise, do employment generating uh, policies and projects, etc. So we assume that that's what it meant. But I mean, that was so until, until I, I got a different interpretation in 2013. And um, it happened, it, let, me, let, me, let me give you an idea how this occurred. And this, this interpretation blew my mind then, and even today I have not quite gotten over that does not represent what I had thought it made. It happened that during the um I during the 2013 by election, uh, I was I, I was scheduled to attend at an advertising agency in Christchurch, uh a group of people, 20 something people or so, uh to decide on various aspects of the of the campaign. But I think that they were particularly conscious of music, how we'd handle the music, what music, etc. And uh you know, we started a meeting. Uh, the prime minister, who had a prominent role in the campaign, the present prime minister, who was then, um, who was then a member of the opposition, Barbados Labour Party, twenty thirteen, was late. As some people say, as 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 is often the case, but she came late and um, did not ask for any recap. We brought up to date what's happening. She looked around the room and said, "What is going on here? I see you have an American here." A white man here and a Trinidad in here, and you won't, you won't give me work for my people. So I said, "What are you what are you talking about?" Um, I, I might have said the term Maori because that's what we uh, I talked to one that informally, either you know Maori or Christian name. But I said, "What are you talking about?" She said, "You you refuse to give my people work, and I had to go down the islands and find work for my people." I said, but if you are wrong, because you, uh, you you can check and see that when the idea of tasks being done and contracts and work to be done for the, for the campaign came about, I mentioned one of your persons to do some work, radio ads, et cetera. And it was turned on because it was too small. And she, she said, yes, you, you, dis, you, dis, you dis my people by 
by offering them small projects. I, I, I said, if it's, I said to myself, she must be not enough money. So I, then I, so, so I, I said, but I thought a campaign was to provide a, a, a persuasive, impressive, factual, um, persuasive document, a campaign, a theme, a uh, manifesto for the public to get their support, to win the government, to get into, to do things for the benefit. Of, of 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 the whole society and not just people. So I I, I showed so I took a note of that, and then so therefore what happens now? What happened since 2018? I really am not surprised because if you talk about getting work for my people, certainly, certainly that has that has been the top of the list among the top of the of the, of, of the current prime minister, and, and and she's fulfilled that wish for her people. But not, what, what, what do you talk about with um, this attitude of work for my people? There's a principle, there's a, a concept in, in, in politics with notes. There's the same which to the victor goes the spoils. To the victor goes the spoils. And that goes back to, um, that goes back to, uh, that's a, that name is, that slogan is attached to American President Andrew Jackson, who was president from Andrew Jackson, 1829, 1837. And that was the phrase that he coined. And it means that those who win victory at the electoral polls have the right, almost the obligation, to control, to dominate all, all of the spoils. Spoils being patronage, spoils being in all patronage, jobs, um, contracts, etc. So that so and that have this that has certainly been manifested. You know, I'm sure people now will talk. We'll talk about we'll talk about we'll talk about the fact probably here to, that lots of positions and posts and jobs and contracts are going to going to friends and family. And there's some there's some person who say friends, family, and fornicators, but I'm not sure. I don't know enough to say that, but that's what it's probably said. How how, how that is said. So the country, based on my experience, should not be alarmed. Because there is a pattern, we talk about patronage, that I made reference to patronage, but if it, but patronage, patronage is, a, is, a, is an international occurrence in politics where the feeling that you have to give people uh, employment, opportunities to maintain their support and their, and, and, and their loyalty down the road for the next election. I believe you would have, I have a, you might have a, a Slide at this with that. Mar Mar if you can read it from me. The light is better on for me. If you, and your voice is better at projecting than mine. You are professional. Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Can you see it? Yeah, can you read it though? You, well, I'm not seeing it clearly. Yes, to read okay. It. Definitions political patronage, the use of state funds and other resources to reward individuals and groups for electoral support. Right. So but the broad definition and the broad activity is known as political patronage. And like I said, it goes off on almost every country in the world, no matter what the system of government, there's an yes. understanding that you, you have to give the people who vote for you, support you, your finances, some opportunity to, to get their loyalty and their support, support, support next time. But then apart from patronage is the broad term, but then, then, then the others, there's another one called, um, uh, what was it? Cronyism? Cronyism, yes. Could you read the definition? Cronyism. Of cronyism. The appointment of friends and associates to positions of authority without regard to their qualifications and other suitabilities. So that gives that gives another indication of the kind of persons that are meant to benefit, intended to benefit from the dispense, the dispense, dispensing of of uh, of dispatches and dispatching and the idea of all is all is mine. I control thing. I sure will come the person's mind when they reflect that that is the attitude that was um, that was reflected when the first thirty love in twenty eighteen, when uh, Bishop Adley became leader of opposition, but got no subversion because under the under the under the political patronage, under to the principle of to the victor goes to spoil, all was was the, the better piece on on to this term. So that is that, is that. But apart, there's one other which I think um, illustrates what I said earlier. Nepotism. Can you read a slide that this is nepotism? 
Nepotism? Hello, I'm not sure if you hear me. Okay, I, I'll read it. I, I said you can do it for myself. Uh, nepotism is the practice among those with power and influence to favor above all others the relatives and close associates of their of themselves by giving them jobs, big salaries, and special privileges. So that that is what apologies. Uh, I had a technical issue. Sorry about no that. Problem. No, yeah. I, and I read nepotism, so I, 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 yeah. I you, yeah, okay. So I, I'm not sure if you have to do that again. Less person want to ask question, first question yeah. about it. I, I, one of the effects of these special privileges, whether it be patriarchy, cronyism, nepotism, is that it, it tends to build, build, it tends to build elite groups, special mm -hmm. groups, the in groups who feel like they're separate and above and apart because they have this political connection and they're benefiting from political patronage. It, 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 it creates um, other in, 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 um, inequalities yes. and stresses in, in the society. And, and, and that, that is exactly what is happening now. What, what, when they see, when they see, by, when they see um, the enthusiasm with which the Prime Minister has created posts and, 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 and paid people's salaries, because if, if you create a post, it must. It must have money, you must get money to pay, money from the taxpayers. And I, I, that was one thing that caught my head, the easiest place that is done, because when I was in cabinet with Prime Minister after, we had a policy in the Ministry of the Civil Service that if you want to create a post, you have a right to seek permission through the Ministry of the Civil Service. It will go to the Ministry of Finance for analysis to see how you would pay for it and where, where the sums will come from. And then it will come to, to, the, to uh, the Ministry of the Civil Service uh, for, uh, for approval. But now, when we see these consultants, these advisors, these influencers, I, 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 they, are, they are numerous in, in, in definition and description. Um, I can see where I don't have policies they maintain because that policy was maintained because you'd have to keep an, uh, a hand on your budget because those people would have to be paid. And therefore, when you pay them, you deprive other persons or, or goods and services in the country from being satisfied and, and something somebody suffers. Instead, um, so that, that is an important thing. The, the this special elite group, yeah. This this idea that um that this person must be um, rewarded above all others. And I remember too that yeah. when the prime minister, when when the now prime minister was then deputy prime minister, the minister of economic affairs and development, um, there were stories that persons were being placed. Or had been or had been employed in overseas offices at salaries over and above others in the, in the department in the in the, mm -hmm. in the in the facility and in the service. So I so we, we are therefore seeing a continuation of the trends where my people have to have jobs and have to be satisfied at the, even at the at, at the ex, expense of others. Um, and it reminds me too of of an experience because I can only give you opportunity to seek to understand how this policy works, how, how it was generated, what it's supposed to do, and then you get a better understanding. We, yes. um, we, uh, we have no, as you know, we've been demanding, and I did, many parts of the public have been demanding, the idea of the number of consultants, their salaries, their duties, et cetera, and we have not been favored with that kind of information, which is ours by right, especially mm -hmm. in the government, which I've spent a lot of time uh, promoting, uh, uh, posturing on uh, transparency and accountability. There's no accountability in that in that respect. And we cannot therefore keep um, keep track of, of of this situation. But there's more to it. What we are what we are seeing happen now, from my recollection, from my experience, is a manifestation of a, a plot that was hatched, a policy that was developed very long ago. In the same year, that the government brags that their ability to get a quick um, Agreement with the IMF, a quick program with the IMF was because they had been planning and consulting and discussing in years and a couple, at least a couple years in advance. Well, mm -hmm. one of the first signs of what the uh, what what of this of this policy and what it would mean is the, what was done to the a post called the Director of Communications. There was a post that in, in the Ministry of Communications and the Prime Minister's office 
called Director of Communication, which was a public service job where you had to have a special a degree, et cetera, in that field to qualify you like other like other civil service jobs. It was an established force. And I remember I remember it very well because um, one of one one of a very strong supporter of the Barbados Left Party um, was had very negative feelings towards the Prime, the Prime Minister after myself because he he was well experienced in the field, writing and speaking and broadcasting, but he did not have a degree which is what was called for by the qualification order. And he was he was trying to seek us to get us to get us to um change change the qualification which you could have to uh, employ him. We refused to and, and and he was not a very happy trooper with us thereafter. But we thought it was unethical, unprincipled, unprofessional, wrong to do just a favor. Uh, so one special person, particularly a support a supporter of the Barbers Bear Party. But then came um very early Charles, Charles Jung. And that post was changed from director of communications to director of communication on social media. And uh Taylor May to fit um Mr. Jung's qualification and experience in work. Mr. Jung um is a very good technical person uh, in generating and providing government programming and information, what you call political propaganda. He's working in Barbados and Antigua and Dominic and other places. So that post came, it was upgraded and, uh, um, and, and just for him. And after that, there was also a move to, and, and I don't think it's not, it's not by accident that, that the communication section of the Prime Minister's of uh, government has been handled in a particular way. Because the one, 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 lesson in politics the political activity and operations is that if you want to influence per person's thinking you have to you have to control the means by which you give them information how it is treated with a particular perspective to get your hope to get a get a, a, a particular result and followed by charlie jung in the in the uh, prime minister's office the director of communication and social media we have had the chief information officer job at the ministry under the Prime Minister's office, Chief Information Officer in, in, in an institution that has been around since 1950 and was always professionally run. Uh, again, the, the qualifications of that was tailor made the duties for a specific person. And that, and who has taken over now, that is a different animal from what it used to be. Not that, not that changes and upgrading and modernization doesn't have to come to institutions. But the point is the whole ethos and practice and activity are no longer the same way. The credibility the GIS is one of the most trusted institutions in Barbados. It has never been accused of being narrowly political, uh, distorting, uh, lying, definitely like that. So it's been a long-standing and highly respected institution. But uh, if that were not enough, the, the government has, among its consultants, and I say um, consultants, influencers, and whatnot, we have a department of what called um, Public Affairs Department. Again, a nest egg, a nest in place for political operatives mm -hmm. at the Public Affairs of Spain. You would have seen that coming to being in the, um, during COVID when there was a lot of confusion over the management and processing and the, and the whole approach to informing the public about that. You remember they brought back then Ambassador, uh, st still Ambassador, that Ambassador Thompson from London, from New York to take on this role. And then it, it yeah. went to, um, uh, I think there was Minister Minister Walker, and then it, then it, so there was uh, there was back and forth. But then this department was set up, which is run and people by political operatives to the extent that even or even a, a former candidate of the DLP who ran against uh, in current currency, James South, is in that department. Another political department. So how much more? These are there's only one aspect because I cannot tell you. I mean, this this does not mention the uh, the the. The, the the post of director of protocol in the prime minister's office, which is a holder, uh, and, 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 and you know you know the salary which is said to be paid to that person. No need for that because um, that role had been carried out on on a need basis by right. somebody from trained from the Ministry of Foreign, Foreign, Foreign Affairs and whatnot. Um, I understand, by the way, uh, part, a part of the Part of the patron is, is what, what is called junkets. And I give you, I read a definition of junket. A junket is defined as 
an extravagant trip or celebration, especially one undertaken and, and enjoyed by a government official or, or by a government official, um, pol political or otherwise, at a taxpayer's expense. So one would therefore have described that would be a good term and a, an accurate term to apply to what transfer or the, the trip to Dubai, where uh -huh. some 67 persons were went. went. And, and but I understand there's another one going off to Egypt soon for uh, an event there. I, I heard a number mention of 18. I don't know if that's 18 is for the, for the whole delegation, the whole contingent, or whether 18 will be 18 for, from, the, from the Prime Minister's office. But I'm, I'm saying then that there's a history of this attempt to satisfy um, jobs for a particular person or a particular um, MP or, or, or whatever. And it, 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 these jobs are not being spread all over the society. It's being concentrated in a particular part, part which is unhealthy, unhealthy for the society. It's, and it's, not, it's not fair tax because when we are not sure we're getting benefit for money. I forgot to mention that uh, Mr. John also goes uh, what I'm told, everywhere the Prime, Prime Minister. Like an international celebrity um, where, where, where he's able to capture every moment if he wants to on camera, on song, etc. promote that image. Um, cause, cause you understand these, this is a day now with all the social media where a lot of his practice is called celebrity politics. So you're not just a, a, a political figure uh, being judged on, your, on what you do, what policies and you do how good or bad they are, their impact, but you also have to have the status. Celebrities have to be Facebook and Twitter and all kinds of other um, areas, which I, yes. I do not have any personal. So that, that, is another, that is another indication of how or what job might work for my people's needs. I was hoping it meant that there'd be a thrust um, of, um, to develop more industries, more policies, create more jobs uh, to, to benefit the society, benefit people. I thought, for example, uh, I remember when the Prime Minister invited the late Prime, late Prime Minister or another to serve on, on a job creation council, where she, she wanted 50,000 jobs, I think it was, in, 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 three, in, in three months or something. Like that. It was a possible, a possible task. He, he um, the Prime Minister, after left the, left, left the um, that position, that committee, Afterward, because it was going nowhere, and uh, and he saw it was going nowhere, and it seems to have died another death because it was it was de developed out of an idea just to, if there's a problem, create an institution, spend some money, uh, uh, and whatnot on. So we are deep into it, and we have a long way to go because uh, I don't suspect that these people haven't been employed to do a job, do whatever jobs they're doing for political reasons are going to be easily dispensed with. And then, and, and, and things we left are begging. So I, I think that in order, because you can't, you'll be destroying the, the platform which you stand. Yes. Which you build if you do not support the people. In other words, feed the foot soldiers. That's an important. An army cannot march or will not march on an empty stomach or an unemployed stomach. So that, that is all, all part of the process. So we have this whole practice. Uh, almost a political obligation. Not, 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 I, would, I would not be a naive uh, give the distorted impression of the public that other prime ministers have not created uh, posts in their offices around them too. Correct. But this, this one is more than all the others put together over a period of time. I remember both when they worked with as personal assistant, right, Mr. Tom Adams, he had about four or five people around him, including personal assistant, etc. When, when he was on the minister of state, the prime minister of we have about five, six people. But, so when you hear these horrendous stories, it really, really, it really, really is doing a disservice to the taxpayers. Let's keep, just let me have a sip of water, please. Yes, yes. Right. And, and um, we ha we have, we, we're having an another five minutes in this section. In this section. Okay. Is there, is there anything you want to ask before I go so that I can, that I um, might be able to amplify it? Um, no, I mean it's as you were. You were. I was going to ask you for some some um, examples. I mean, somebody's just written me and talk about the communication specialists um, that they they employed, and you mentioned that that the um in the Ministry of Health and Education, etc. Um, so um, you've answered the question I had. 
and, and then and, and then there was one there's one Roy Morris who was press secretary who is now um, director of citizen engagement again where you go when the party speaks so the apparatus and still people complain that there's certain information they're not getting they can't get certain information oh no but they will they're not allowed they're not given they're not allowed to get they can't search it out because um the freedom of information is not even a, a bad memory it's not a memory at all now and i think that there's another indictment in my part as a former member of the press how they could sit back and allow themselves to be disrespected pushed around or used exploited who they're only good enough for chit chats determined by the government about what they want to talk and they do not sit down and expose themselves to the press in a genuine manner where they can prepare themselves on a particular topic or a topic and ask questions out of it and and, and, and try to dig out the question that the public uh asks because the press represents the public so i just so I, I think this is a uh, uh an unsatisfactory and satisfactory situation socially and the press should start agitating for themselves because otherwise they have no standing, they have no respect, they have no risk. What, what, what does Marcy Rickshaw do then as the loyal opposition has been to supplant the press? Or maybe there's no need for a press of the type that we had before when there when are bodies like this, institutions like this, who've come on before and have done a, a tremendous job in enlightening the public, asking the tough questions, and keeping the public currently up to date on all on as many matters as possible. Um, using a variety of, of voices, indication, um, information, briefings, et cetera, in order to be able to give a very comprehensive and and uh, and an expert, well-informed presentation on all the topics that have come before us. Yeah. Uh, I think that I think, am I right on time? I still have another minute. Yeah, right on time. Very, very, very well said. Um, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Murray, and I think the people in the audience, they are, uh, they are lifting out the jobs as well, you know, and, um, and because we can see it happening, they hear, they hear stylists and who is now, um, what did she know? Did she know? Has a, has a di di direct, direct of protocol, but rumor has it that she's soon to retire. It doesn't mean that that post will not be filled by anybody else, but I, I'm, I got it on good authority that she's soon, she's soon to retire. Right. Easy D is saying, thank you, Mr. Murray. You always make sense with your reasoning. And thanks for the education. So we had the um, um, political patronage, cronyism, nepot nepotism, and junket. Um, right. you know, I didn't know what junket was. So I learned something new tonight. I knew, I knew I, I, you know, that that happened, but I didn't know the term for it. So yeah. I learned something new tonight, Mr. Murray. Thank you so very much. I hope you will stick around. Um, of course I will, of course. For, um, Thank you. You know, um, Mr. Let me ask with Caswell. Caswell, can you take one minute and just comment on Mr. Um, Murray's very educational presentation? Yeah, good night, everyone, and thanks for having me, Marcy. I sat down and I listened. I even wanted to interrupt because, you know, um, Glenn has a lot of information, but I have a bit more detailed information on the same subject. Yeah. Like, for instance, the Prime Minister has the power to create posts in the public service under Section 14, 13, 14, um, 14 in the, public, in the um, public Service Act. However, that is the extent of the authority then. She creates the posts, and then there's somebody else supposed to fill them. And whether these posts are permanent, she makes them permanent or temporary posts, it's supposed to be done by the Ministry of the Public Service. That is what the Public Service Act says. And that's the way it was done when I was there. At, at, but, it, but, they, but, but they codified it, they put it into law. That's, that was the practice. But that was how it was done. By convention and by everything else, people knew that's how it's supposed to be done. But the Barbados Labour Party in 2007, one of the last pieces of legislation passed in Parliament before the change of government, just made sure that the other government were coming and they couldn't do what me is doing now because they put this into law. It wasn't law before, it was a practice that happened because the minister could get people hired now, but no, it says it got to be done by the Ministry of Public Service. However, 
Uh, Glenn's right this book about one, the, one the, minute, Caswell. Um, one minute, one minute. <laughs> we don't have much time on this topic. One minute. All right, all right, you know. And um, but what they have done, they have now forgotten the rules that they put in place because the prime minister was in in that in that cabinet and in that parliament that passed this law, you know. So she ain't got no excuse. And how and and then we go on. Glenn asks how they're being paid for because. These, these things are supposed to be budgeted so you will never get money from. They hide it in professional services. Yeah. They don't call okay. them professional services and they, and they put the money in there. So they, it, it, it's in the estimates already. And and, 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 and what they do, they don't um, say, well, all these in Prime Minister office, they put some in labor, they put some in health, they put some in that's all right. over that's the place so that nobody, so that nobody would be able to Several in the Prime Minister's office, all these boys, huh? they're spraying them all over the place. They get every ministry some, even if you don't work in that particular ministry. It is yeah. nothing short of corruption. Yeah. If, 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 if it isn't corruption, then it is a first cousin. <laughs> At least a first cousin. It, it can't be, it's in a, it in a yeah. second cousin, third Mr. cousin, or an acquaintance. We're, we're, we're going to, let, let's see if we can hold some time at the end because we have some guests mm. in, in um, mm. tonight. And believe it or not, I have, because people want you to continue. But because of how we structure tonight, because no, no, no problem. No problem. No to go in, you know, in depth. So we hold it there, hold it, hold it. Right. And then um, I'm just going to um, share a little bit, uh, Mr. Franklin and um, Mr. Murray. There's a song coming through Mr. Murray's mic. So I'm going to turn it off until he's ready to speak. OK, I just turn off your mic until you're ready to speak, sir. But um, I wanted to do a presentation. I told Mr. Franklin um, um, this today about the Bridgetown Inter International University. And I'm going to mention, make some mention, spend a couple of minutes talking about that university this evening. I'm not going to be able to go um, in detail because my presentation is not completely ready. Um, I was told. Um, so we're going to make sure that, you know, it's completely ready. But I promised you. So I want to have a little talk, Mr. Franklin, um, about it. I do have, though, a... Um, uh, 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 a document that I want to read that was put out by one of the students, past students of the the um, the Barbados International University. And here I go. I'm 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 actually running ahead of myself, and that's because I don't have my my presentation. But I'm gonna ask Dave if he could put up the the picture of the, the that young man Krishna. His name is Krishna. It is a long name. He has four names. But um, in the, I, I think what I was told is that um, they go by the last name. Okay. And this young man, Krishna, he died of suicide on April 16th, um, 2023. So yesterday, Mr. Franklin would have made one year that this student um, came all the way from India to Barbados to attend this university and he died from suicide. I don't know if anybody might have seen his seen the article in the newspaper. And this has caused great concern um, for uh, a lot of people um, when we when you hear about what has happened to this young man because Mr. Franklin, it is not something that is just happening um, in Barbados. This is a university where uh, there is um, a lot of, in India, they do a lot of recruiting and they promise these young people that they are going, um, you know, they're coming to Barbados and Barbados is close to America and that they're going to be doing their their um, residency in America. You know, they, the practical will be done in America. They come here. They're sold something. They're told something. They're sold something, and when they get here, they are they they're not receiving what they what they what they sell. And this is what the students are alleging. So let me let me be clear about this. This is the allegations that's coming from the students and some of the past students, um, uh, past um, I would say past lecturers, um, of the the BIU um university um here in barbados and 
there was another um university this is um washington university mr franklin i don't know if you remember that university that actually um had to be closed down because of fraud and uh, well as we go on throughout the week i'm going to show you um some possibly possible connections between um biu and washington university you can form your conclusions and to see if you think that there are you know any comparisons um between between the two there is an article that was written by a student and i just want to um um i want to i want to read that um i want to read that that article um for you and try to put it up on the screen right i just take a couple uh, minutes to to go through this and this is an this is um an article um found on um on let me just try to get the website for you but there's just so much on this before the night is up i'll get the correct name of the website and put it up but it's right here and it says don't get scammed by fraud university like bridgestone international university running in the caribbean island now this is um this person's view on it and it's written um as though this person is uh is a student all right let me turn off i think there's a noise coming through caswell's mic so i'm gonna turn off um his mic um at this time all right and um the, the the this um past student is talking about is is alleging that there is um money laundering there's suspending of students fake commitments and promises no authoritative license and that they've converted a five-room apartment into a medical university now i must say that i did try to reach the university um today there's a number that is put up on the website i called the, unit, the number a couple of times and did not get anybody um at that number because i wanted to let them know that we're going to be talking about this tonight and just so just some of the things that the students are concerned about um and it's the uh, the article reads in recent years the rise of fraudulent university has become a concerning issue and they're alleging that Bridgestone International University is one such institution that has been in the spotlight. The Caribbean island has been a popular destination for international students seeking higher education. However, it's essential to be cautious of fraudulent university, and they are um, calling some other names of other universities, which claim to offer high quality education, but have no valid accreditation or recognition. Now, um, concerning the accreditation, I can say that this the, um, the, this this is not an allegation because I've done my due diligence on on this, and this um, university is not yet accredited. Right, that's a fact. It's not yet accredited. That's a fact. That's not an allegation. Everything else is an allegation, but I can tell you that 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 is it's 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 not accredited. Bridgetown International University has been under scrutiny for its illegit illegitimate accreditation claims and false promises of quality education. The university claims to be accredited um, by the Barbados Accreditation Council and also by CAM HP. And that is that I know for sure that it's not um, uh, accredited by CAM HP and therefore would not be accredited by BAC. In some cases, um, they're saying that they've gone off to create fake websites and social media accounts, posting as legitimate universities or education agencies, okay? Um, and there are lots of things that they're alleging here um, in, this, um, in this article. But what I want to bring to your attention, um, guys, is that because of the false promises that um some of these universities have um you know given to students that they're recruiting from overseas the students come here and like krishna their hopes are dashed a lot of them they're not um even on my based on my research i'm getting to understand that some of them are not even up to cxc level but they can pay probably a hundred thousand US dollars to come 
to this um to you know to these universities and they're not just in Barbados these universities are in Canada they're in the USA okay so um it's not just Barbados but they're selling a dream they're selling a this hope that these um that these students are going to be able to you know um get a a, a, a medical degree and what has happened in a lot of these cases is that they realize that the 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 degree that they that they now have they can't use it and that is what has happened in in a lot of these cases now biu as i said that i have found out i did my own research on that and found out that they are not accredited however the students are alleging the students are alleging that in India, they're told that the, the university is accredited. So a student like Krishna would come to Barbados to study and to get his medical degree, recognize that it's not what he's promised. His parents would have, um, you know, whether they've, they've, they've sold gold, they've sold their property, they've done all kinds of things to send him to, to, to study in Barbados, and he gets here. And it's not going well. And for some students, they don't want to tell the parents what is happening. And unfortunately, um, the the other students are alleging that this is what has happened to this young man. And unfortunately, last year, almost a year, well, it's a year. Yesterday was a year. Um, he took his own life. And this is not the only university are the only time that these allegations and well it's not an allegation for um washington university and i'm going to show you that um in another evening when we um do the full presentation but in honor of this young man i wanted to say something tonight and sometimes you know uh mr franklin if the, they're not bajan so we don't care about them you know i'm, I'm as you know originally from um jamaica and i understand how some some people not everybody um how we see foreigners you know uh but this young man died while he was here sold uh a dream sold uh that you know he's coming to this reputable university according to the students um that's their allegation and but when they get here for a fact i know that the university is not um accredited now What's also important is that this university is housed at Chelsea. Is it Chelsea? I think it's Chelsea House or Chelsea Building, where they have bought the building from um, from a Hoyas, and it is um, and Tony Hoyas. It's Tony, right? Tony Hoyas. The building has been bought um, from them which is why um i said i will be speaking about a little bit about them um tonight and some of the students and 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 we're hearing from others are saying that um the, the this this university that's not accredited is being frequented by various members <laughs> senior members within this um this government senator there is um, allegation that, that the deputy PM is being seen up there quite a bit. You know, of course, Tony Hoyas himself up there a bit. This is what they are saying. And so the question that we are asking tonight is, you know, this, this um, university that is not accredited, I was speaking to somebody overseas and they said, but um, what about the authorities in Barbados? Don't they know that it's not accredited? And so these are questions that we're asking. If the deputy PM is going there quite often, if that is true, does she know that it's not accredited? Would the senator know that it's not accredited? These are some of the questions that we want to ask tonight, and we're going to get back to this as soon as I get the full presentation um, ready for you. But those are some of the questions that we are going to ask. But I really just want to at least mention it tonight because um, yesterday is actually one year since um, that young man um, died at, at suicide. And just so you know, just so you know, one of the things that's going to come up in that presentation is that you're going to see that in India, the recruiting organization um, in India, that business that recruited this young man, 
put in the newspaper in India, I read it myself, that this young man um, died from a heart attack. Quite interesting. And you're going to see from the presentation that I'm going to give later in the week that in Canada, Canada is saying a lot of these um, Indian students who are coming under these um, false pretenses, that a lot of them are, you know, committing suicide. They're saying, according to Canada, three to four of them per month are being sent back home in a body bag. And I think that in in, in light of if, if what is being said in Canada is true, based on the research that I've done, that this is something I believe that Barbados needs to look into. As I said, the Washington University, they went, you know, did all their due diligence with that one. And we're asking for some due diligence to be done with the Bridgestone um, International University to look into it and, and to, to determine exactly what is happening there. And so that is my short presentation tonight. And as the week progresses, I will share with you um, some more. I don't know if Mr. Franklin has anything that he wants to add or take away or <laughs> to that. Yes, Marcia, I, I do actually, not a lot, because I have not had direct interaction with this particular university, but I have had interaction with another one, the one up there, so by the BET building. Um, and, and um, just above courtesy, courtesy by the buddy, are you there? Yes, yes. And um, I, because they treated the staff very badly, and they treated the students very badly. And you had people teaching at the university who couldn't get a job teaching at primary school in Barbados. And mind you, they, they don't mind so much, they're paying them $2,500. You don't got no lecture again, $2,500. And I'm not talking US. I'm talking Barbados. Mm. And then they had problems getting paid. It, 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 this is just a rap. The whole university thing is just a racket. First of all, they call them university. American University and all this kind of thing, or Washington University, and they and they have no connection. None of the shareholders. Mr. Franklin, let me just quickly tell you something. Why they're doing that, based on what I've researched, why they're doing that is because they're selling that dream to the mm. the if the children. They're telling them that when they come here, there is a connection to with Barbados to um to the U.S. and so they put the word mm. America. Or Washington inside the um, the name of the university to attract the Indian um, students. Yes, that that is true. And what happens? They they tell because they tell this they market it in such a way as to suggest to the young people that if you get your um, qualification from this university, this American or Washington or whatever type of university. Um, you don't have to go and do other exams like how they do at UE. If you go to UE and you get a medical degree, you still have to go and pass some type of exam. I know exactly what it is or to, in order to, to, to even to intern yeah. at the, uh, in, in the United States. But these people are being told, no, man, we have a connection. Mind you, there are some universities like that because I'm at the University in Guadalajara, Mexico, which was the Ford Foundation University, mm -hmm. there, um, when you graduate there, you, you, it's like you graduated in the States and you are treated right. as though you were in the United States. So they sell that lie to those children as well. So when they get there, when they um, graduate and they got a piece of paper that um, it should be on a roll, you know, and you know, that's the best thing you can do with it. Put it on the roll and hope to the best. Um, and that's in a little bathroom to shoot. It isn't. It isn't as good as that, you know. And and um, when you because I, I was dealing with some of the students there and thing, but they were all very afraid. And what happens is that the families borrow and, uh, as much, and then hoping that this child will do good. No, no, I don't want to do good. Do well, because you know, do good is a bad, a bad thing. I want to wait tonight too. Um, the child will do well and make lots of money and bring the family out of poverty. Yes. And then when you know that, then you realize that you can't bring them out of poverty. You don't want to go back home and shame the family, especially now the family got this big debt, encourage 
because you know it's usually um very poor people mm -hmm. who sell the family gold people say family so but this time is really family gold that passed down through generations and stuff so that they can educate at least one of the, the boys usually boys and um when that happens and then the boy can't go back home he don't know what to do he shamed the parents and but these people right, take up all this money and they, then they have a few people in barbados well placed that assist them in this fraud yeah and uh, it, it i i remember there was one <laughs> when he's when the scandals they had a, they had a cadaver and it's smelling bad you know and people they had to go and, and and it was getting green fungus on it and all kind of stuff but the person who donated the body they were supposed to only use it for a, a, a short period and then get back to the families that they never sent it but they wouldn't send it back you know so we we don't get the kind of ministry of health inspections that we should have especially people having cadavers and staying around the place you know and so i don't know if the ministry of health is aware or they don't care or they ordered off the job because a whole lot of nastiness goes on then you you are not accredited in barbados the barbados accreditation council can um vouch for you so it is just a way for these people to make money and uh, and, and the thing is when they catch a person let's say his university is the caswell franklin american university and they catch me in that i then go and sell it the marcy weeks uh, washington university okay. same people same players just then that they, um but they change the name to something else and they set up down the road or another building or something like that and i do not believe that if i can gather this information that and i'm not one of the brightest and like a sleuth that we have and like Kimar, and if i can get this information the government should have it too but mm -hmm. they turn a blind eye and eventually the government of india unless they are complicit too would have to investigate what is happening to their um citizens in barbados and uh, throughout the world but you know there's so many indians that they don't mind losing a few yeah yeah um um someone just said wrote something here that says barbadian students who studied at the one in will did come out with such poor training and this is actually a medical doctor who is telling me this and this is one of the reasons mr franklin one of the reasons i want to bring this to the attention of everybody in barbados um those you know, i know that there are a couple of people who know because this medical doctor is writing me and says barbadian students who studied at the one in will they come out with such poor training that they cannot be even placed in the internship program here and that is what um will come out in my um presentation um when we do it on another night that that they're not ready they affect the bajan um students badly this medical doctor is saying but mr franklin we we um we're gonna have to just touch and go on this tonight um but i i really wanted um to to mention it as um it's a one year since this um, young man died somebody's asking what does it he he committing suicide what does it have to do with the government of Barbados? What we're asking is for the government of Barbados to do some investigation into this university. That's what we're asking. We're asking um, the government of Barbados to check, to see if people are being scammed into coming to Barbados well, to a well, university. Well, well it, not the government of Barbados. It's Barbados Labour Party then, because the Barbados Labour Party members have been seen in and out of the university some of them in government some of them are not they're there on a regular basis so let's say not the government of barbados let's just say the barbados labor party who happens to be in government if that's what they want so be it it will be accurate yeah but there's some there, there um there, there 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 are some key people that are turning up there and i just want to know i mean anybody can visit any university let's be um you know if it is true that they're going anybody can visit any university but i just want to to ask the question 
Um, you know, do they know what's happening in the university? Do they know that, that quite a number of those students have left, um, you know, because of the treatment and because of what they've experienced there? Do they know that? Um, those are things that we, that questions that we are, that we, we are asking. But Mr. Franklin, tonight I have uh, Mr. James Paul and John Knox um, with us. And I see Mr. James Paul is here. I'm going to bring him in. And they are um, going to talk with us for a couple of minutes about this petition that they are um, they are launched or have launched. They're saying absolutely no. They don't want any, uh, you know, development on, on a particular piece of land. And I love this because what this is saying is that our Barbadian uh, people, they are rising up you know people love to say that that Bajans are passive but we are seeing um over and over we had that community in st james mr franklin we have those um down there in st john um the people are rising up and the people are telling the government no <laughs> they're standing up for themselves they're opposing when they need to oppose and i think that this is important so i wanted to have them for a couple minutes mr james paul good night Hello, good night. Yes, good night. Good night, sir. Um, yes. <laughs> how, how are you doing tonight? I am fine, thanks. I'm fine. Yes. Yes. Hi, James. Are... Yes, sir. How are you doing, man? I am good, Mark. Yes, are you okay? But, yeah, I'm good. When I heard Marcy say a petition and James Paul, I was thinking about another petition, but <laughs> no, 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 we're not I'm just, I'm just, Marcy, I'm just pulling this leg. <laughs> okay, all right. So James, um, James is here to, um, to talk about, um, that petition that is being, um, being, um, launched or has been launched, and also Mr. John Knox. Good night, Mr. Knox. Hi. Good night, Marcia. Um, am I allowed to show some pictures? Yes, yes. I, I, I attend the, the, uh, all these the next to you. The picture? <laughs> it says all decent. <laughs> They're all decent. They're all decent. Okay, go go ahead. Go ahead. So Mr. Um okay. Mr. James Paul, can you give us uh you know a, a synopsis of the situation? Mm -hmm. What is happening while Mr. Knox um get the pictures ready? Well, you know. We have a situation where I think that we need to, we talk about food security in our country. Um, and of course, it's the ongoing initiative, the ongoing 25 by 25 initiative that we, that we have going in the country, where we're trying to in, in, increase food production by 25% um, by 2025, which is actually just one year away from now. Now, in that regard, therefore, I, I believe that we need to have an aggressive effort in terms of ensuring that every square foot of urban land that we have in this country we need to have policies and measures in, in place to ensure that it is adequately utilized. Yes. But what is also more important is that you also want to ensure that you do not compromise the available um, um, arbor land that we have because I don't know if you've checked recently, but we have a situation around the world really discovering that the amount of agricultural land available for, for food production is actually declining. And I know sometimes you have this farcical um, you know, uh, proposal where people seem to think that somehow that you, you don't need is at least a, a, a soil in order to grow anything. And you know that, that that of course is something that we, the apologists who the real estate developers and these people who want to you know utilize agricultural land in the case in the case of Barbados, however, which I think is more specific, you know, this this year we have we are seeing large tracts of lands which I think put it this way: if you are an owner of agricultural land and you have an inability to actually utilize the land properly, I think that what, what should happen is that you know you, you you get people to use it who have the ability to actually cultivate the land but do not though use that as a way of instance as it have been, has been happening letting it go into my trees or whatever that you're talking about and then once has done so for a number of years 
And people see these shrubs or grass on the land, they assume, well, it is no longer agricultural land. It is arable land. So you have then an excuse then to apply to government to actually transfer its use from agriculture, okay, into um, resident for residential purposes or money, whatever. But you're putting concrete on the land and you're compromising that land for future generations. I will also want to add another thing here too. We have a situation where, for instance, we have urban decay in this country. So you, for instance, you take Bridgetown. I, 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 it is sad. When you go through Bridgetown, there are so many empty office spaces in Bridgetown. It is scandalous. Yet we are permitting the development of greenfield sites in this country on good agricultural land, arable land. Okay? It is making money for the construction people, for the construction magnets. But on the other hand, what about our local, our, our, the developments for the future that we are saying to young people that we want to get into agriculture and you're putting them on plots which are not viable? That is the other issue. So that, that is something that we need, we, we, we need to examine. The, uh, the other point I, I really wish to make, and I, I know that this is something that generally we, 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 we need to face up. Look, agriculture is not a five-year Developing agriculture is not a five-year cycle because sometimes in Barbados, unfortunately, whichever government is in power, by the way, we think about a five-year cycle. So when one government comes in, you make these grand promises about developing agriculture, and then, of course, another one comes in, something else happens. What we need to see is a consistent policy from government to government that says this is what is available to the farming community. And, and you see, the, the, the issue that we are facing now today, where we are seeing large tracts of cultivable land are now in danger of being transferred out of agriculture into other uses under the pretext, for instance, one, that we need more housing. And we have a declining population, by the way. We have a declining population, and we need more housing. And also, too, many of the things that are being built, they are not even occupied, they're not even being rented. And in addition, when it, when, when it comes to that, many folks, for instance, the big thing right now, Draxol. Draxol is one of the most arable plantations that we have. It's arable land. It is land on which we grew crops. Yet, I am not sure exactly, I don't want to speak out the term because I've been trying to find out exactly how much land is being planned to be taken out of cultivation in Draxol. But instead of coming up with an imaginative agricultural program that will keep that plantation in production, what are we thinking of? Putting more money into the hands of these construction magnets so that they can benefit. Now, can we really be serious about food security? And again, a demonstration of it, it's at Banatang. Again, if anyone goes to that field tomorrow, you can see, for instance, that it is occupied with canes, it has been cultivated, it is still being cultivated. So if we are serious about the 25 by 25 initiative, why are we allowing good agricultural land to be cut up? And why, and why are we using the pretext of providing agriculture for land for housing? Why are we doing it? This, this is absolutely, this is, why, why are we doing it? And men in countries, even in the UK, for instance, you know, in the UK, there's a policy that for agricultural land that you cannot transfer it out of agriculture like that. They, they, they hold their agricultural land sacrosanct. But yet, we in the region, we in, in, in Barbados, seem to think somehow, right, that it is appreciated when we take our agricultural land and cut it up, okay? Because construction magnets, whoever they are, because they might be politically connected or whatever, want to make a wealth of money at the expense of Barbadians. And yet we, we want to encourage our young people to get into agriculture. We are not sending yeah. the right signals. Yeah. So, you know, um, Mr. Mr. Paul, thank you. I, I would see your your um, submission in the newspaper all the time. And, and it's like there's this lone voice crying in the wilderness. You know, and I, I can hear it in your in your voice tonight. Let me bring um, 
in in the discussion um your uh, mr john knox who is a resident um in banantine ba banantine i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly is that correct banantine yeah so um mr can you hear me mr yeah. knox Mr. Knox, is okay, it possible okay. to share uh, the screen? I have a um, presentation. Uh, uh, yes, if you, because you were asking, you share. You would have to share the screen, or you would have to send it to us. Um, those pictures oh. would have had to come to us, or you share the screen yourself. So I thought you I thought you knew how to share the screen when you asked. Um, um, no, you I'm sorry. Uh, if you send the pictures to um, send the pictures to Mr. James Paul, and we will get them um, shared for you, sir. Um, my apologies. Okay, I can do that, but um, just give me a chance here. Okay, what, what why do I do? You... Should I start off? Let me talk. Let me talk, let me talk through the let me talk through the presentation. They're yes. they're basically um, they're they're basically three areas I want to deal with. Um, first of all, there's flooding about 500 plus acres. Um, it's all in karst uh, topography. So it's, it absorbs a lot of, um, it absorbs a lot of the uh, water, but mm -hmm. what it doesn't absorb runs down to the road uh, between Bannatine Gardens and Cave Hill. Now that's where the uh, uh, burying ground is. Now, mm -hmm. Now it reaches the road and it actually tops the road, floods the road, cars stick up in it. Um, it then goes into the next field. What has actually not gone underground already? It goes underground. Mm. So, it's a What's left we can't on see top those, of the We can't see those pictures. I would love to be able to see them. Um, and you can't get them sent. All right, yeah, I can get them sent. Let me let me see how we... How we ah. Okay, well, so let's send it and let me just talk to Mr. Paul um, in the meantime. Because yes, I think do, that, that, um, do that, do that, do that. Yeah, everybody would want to, okay. to see what it is that you are that you are speaking about. Um, so, um, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Paul, can you tell us? Is it the, the, the this is a, this is a petition that's coming from the the actual residents? Um, is it that they're they're meeting about it? How did it come about? Well, actually, how it came about is that I, I didn't even recognize that this is happening. There, I, I got a call from one of the residents, and he indicated that I should come and look at it. Um, but, but, but I went to see. I couldn't believe it because I always suspected that in that particular area, that something like that could happen. But when I went up there and I saw the area that was actually in canes at the moment, the good canes, they look pretty good, okay? And I realized it was that field. I, I was wondering what, what kind of, you know, what's going on here? Um, and I can understand why people would be concerned because look, we, we, we are saying that, we want to basically develop Barbados properly. Um, and, and you have to ask the question, what type of thinking goes into the whole approval uh, or we're going to uh, the approval for it that will make these people even contemplate applying to the government to have this change of use? What, what type of thinking? And, 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 the, and, and the thing about it is, that as, as pointed out by Mr. Knox just now, when you take into consideration what happens in that particular area, where, of course, it has been subjected to flooding, people who know the area will tell you that it has been subjected to flooding. Okay? Um, and it is like a basin in which the water flows. Why what, would what you actually want to put house, houses there and in good agricultural land? And, and, and you know, it, it is, I think, one of the things that I also want to point out, look, we have, the government has some programs there to help young people including the feed program, things like this. But one of the things, too, that we have observed is that the size of the plots that you are putting, putting the sepal on are sometimes not really viable. Because remember, we have what we, what we call in Barbados tropical soils. These are tropical soils. 
that um, because of their nature, they do not retain nutrients in the uppermost parts of the soil very easily. As a matter of fact, if you understand Africa, they practice what is called slash and burn agriculture. Why? Because what happens is that when you cultivate them consistently for prolonged periods, they lose their nutritive qualities. So mm -hmm. you know you have to do something to them, enrich them to get them, you know, back up to where they should be to, to really plant properly, right? So what happens is that if you have too small an acreage available to you, you cannot practice any real intensive types of agriculture. And remember, if you are expecting young people to make a business out of the farming, one of the things that you have to remember, okay, you have to give them at least a viable, what I will call a viable economic unit. And a viable economic unit means that you cannot be, go below a certain acreage if you are expecting them to be a full-time farmer. Because remember, economic opportunities are limited. And we are saying to young people that we want to give them a future in agriculture. And if you want to give them a future in agriculture, if you give them a land area, which is below the minimum economic unit, how can they make, make a future? It's like giving a, a fella a spoon to shovel sand in. He can't make it anyhow, right? So th th this, this, is, this is the issue. And I really think that when, it, when we have these type of large acreages coming up, where I don't know for whatever reason you want to get, the government wants to get in the case of drafts or whatever. If the current owners that you say, okay, but one, they, they cannot, they find it difficult, let us have an imaginative lease agreement in place that allows persons who really want to get into serious farming to be able to utilize the land because this is what England has done, right? What, what they have done is that they are able to keep their agricultural land in, produ in, produ in, in production and, be, and, and also safe from being compromised by entering into arrangements, legislative arrangements by the way, that prevents that land, first of all, from being utilized for anything else other than agriculture, but also to what they would do in those developed countries is to provide some type of uh, support in, in terms okay. of subsidies, whatever, to make sure that that is, that is what we do, right? And, and, and I think that if I don't think it is too much yes. to ask. It is not too much to ask for. Yeah. Well, um, guys, if someone asked, wanted to know, um, I guess, your credentials. Um, this is Mr. James Ball, and he is from the Barbados Ag Agricultural Society. And he is a chief executive officer. Um, pardon me, we didn't say that at the top of the in, of the discussion. He is um, from the Barbados Agricultural Society, and he's a chief executive officer. And he's all, always in the newspaper commenting on agriculture in Barbados. Um, let me see if we um, where we are, um, Mr. Knox. I suspect you sent those pictures already to Mr. Paul. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can yeah. find him. Yes, okay. Hold well, on. Mr. Knox, while he's searching for them, because in lieu of time, can you just right. start to talk to us about the community and what's what's happening in the community? Right. Yes. Go ahead, sir, Mr. Knox. I actually do not live in the community. I live on ah. the planta in the plantation yard. The plantation okay. yard owned land up there and developed it as a, um, a first in the 60s. Then the actual, that's Bannatine Plantation. I live on Bannatine Plantation. Mm -hmm. The Newton, Newton uh, development occurred just to the um, south of the Bannatine development. And the whole area is known as Bannatine Gardens. Um, so that's my connection with it. I've lived here since 1965. I grew yeah. up here. I came here when I was nine years old. Um, so I know the land. Um, I know a lot about it. I know the history. I know everything. Well, not everything. I know a lot. Okay. So, and I know that um, putting the putting that land into into housing is not is not the right thing. Um, my family own Kingston Estates. Own King. Own own Kingston Estates Limited. Um, you may recall that went through. Uh, law, law courts from 1998, but it started off as part. There was a, a 2400. The aim was to get 2400 
acres of land in Christchurch, converted to five golf courses with residential areas and so on. It was wow. supposed to be, uh, you know, it, um, it was basically politicians that were involved in that and Canadian um, financiers of the joint venture between the two. Um, okay. Up to 94. Up to 90. So I so I have been really fighting the, um, uh, my mother's family has really been fighting um, the change of use from agriculture to whatever. The idea was golf, but there was no water. But there actually is water, but not enough for golf, I don't think. Um, <clears throat> but enough for irrigated agriculture in small areas. Um, so I was involved in the fight from nine, oh gosh, from ages 30 years more. Um, and my reason is because the land, what has, what was been, the land was being treated as a commodity and I just did not like that. It, it has a lot of history and it has a lot of value. It actually allows us to eat and live and it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. There's a financial aspect, which uh, the owner is important, which the owner is obviously going to be, in, um, is obviously going to be concerned about, but there's also an economic aspect. So for example, the joy of, um, of land that's been kept well and is producing, you cannot, you cannot put a money value on that. Um, yeah. so I think it's important to keep get your bearing straight. Now, the reason sugar did well, sugar really did well after the Second World War, and the reason was because all of the half of the world's sugar production was destroyed in Europe, Russia, out in the um Far East. All was, I mean, most was gone. I think the, the Output the demand was at the start of the war 30 million tons. At the end of the war, the, the supply was 15 million. So England was um England was um under rationing, as was America. That huh. drove the price up by almost a factor of 10, believe it or not. And that pers persisted that so we got we got in 61, we got the deep water harbor out of sugar, QEH out of sugar. Um but things turned around as yeah. it always happens and um sugar did that was not was no longer profitable but the land the land is still there the land hasn't gone anywhere mm -hmm. sometime if a war comes along now <laughs> you might never know the price might go back <laughs> and it looks as though a war might come soon <laughs> mm -hmm. so I don't know if you've got the uh, the pictures and you yeah, can show so them. I, I, will, I, I will talk to you. Right, yeah, they are. And I believe uh, um, once Dave gets them, he's he's gonna get it up um, for us once they okay. once they have them. I think somebody's right. sharing. They're sharing. Someone is sharing their. Um, this. Oh ah, yeah, there it? it is. Okay. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So no, no, we, no. We we literally we literally have about seven minutes. Okay, and I'm going to give this right. seven minutes to you. Seven Go minutes. Ahead. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I want to talk a bit about flooding, about the land, and the fact that there's something called karst. Um, okay. Can you play that video? Mm. Sometimes the playing of videos is a is a challenge. Okay. Um, in, that would show. That would show. That That's would right. show the. Um, that would show the. That would show the um, actual flooding. So, okay, this area here is about 550 acres. It goes from, this is the ridge development up here. And the land is, as you will see, pockmarked by depressions. So water should really go into the land easily. But uh -huh. this development is probably going to be part, partially to blame for a lot of runoff because once you cover the land with um, with concrete and asphalt, it does not absorb. You may have wells and so on, but you're going to get yeah. run off. It ends up coming down here, flooding mm -hmm. this area here where the housing is supposed to go. The housing is supposed to go here. It oh. tops the road. It tops the road. 
Um, some of it, go, a lot of it goes into the sucks and so on here in this field, the big okay. depressions. So there's a lot of water on the land. So, and the rest goes to the ABC highway and across. So, so and you're then, saying that there's a pot potential um, a flooding risk here. Yes. So if you put a, if you put the, 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 um, I mean, engineers can mitigate it, but this is a real good problem to solve. It's not going to solve really easy, but um, you can move on now. Um, the next slide. Okay, so the idea is here is that the, here's the water course. It comes down and it crosses the ABC highway through a uh, culvert. Pass next one. Okay, this is the uh, this is the this is the if you see here, this is the drainage that they have actually shown here. So it's okay. it's like two it's like two developments. This is up on a higher elevation. This is on a higher elevation. Yeah, and it's it's sort of like like two islands, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. The flooding will occur down here, and it might it might go a little bit long bigger, um, depending on how well it's mitigated. So you've got a lot of lots that have the potential to be flooded. This is the output of this is the exit and entrance for one um, development here, and this mm -hmm. is the exit and entrance for the other development here. A lot of cars come down this hill very quickly, so that, that is potentially potential trouble there. It may wow. not be, but that's a potential problem there. So right. let's go to the next. Okay, that's basically the same blurb. Um, let's go to the next. Forget that. Okay, so just showing that that might flood here. Go to the next. That might flood here. Go to the next. Depending on how much. Um, well, this is what the field looks like in still. Um, so houses will be up in this area and into this area. And this is the road which uh, is over top. So this Continue. is what it looks like when it's flooded. When it's flooded, yeah, last year. Now, if you look here, you will see okay, canes that was barely. Only last sprouted. year, um, six months ago, six months ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it goes in. The water goes in this um, depression here, goes underground, and the rest of it goes up along this field over here. Mm -hmm. um, if you look carefully, you see the canes barely sprouting. Now you think, oh boy, all those canes are going to die. Go to mm -hmm. the next slide. Go to the next slide. The canes survive the flooding. The canes will survive drought. The canes will, supply, will survive a hurricane. The, that's the reason that we've always grown sugar cane because it's a crop that is very hardy. It can survive all those conditions and mm -hmm. produce. Go to the next. Okay, this is 1951 aerial photo. That's when the price of sugar was high. So you can see every single field is uh, this is um, actually in good order and producing sugar cane. It's large scale uh, production. The blue lines are the are the drainage air, the drainage directions. The, uh -huh. the dots are wells on the plantation. Uh -huh. Next one. Okay, this is just to show what happened with the price of sugar between 1900 and uh, I think 1960. This 60, is the First yes. World War. This is the First World War. So it, these are the 30s when things were so rough in Barbados. We were just not getting money for sugar. So wages were low, unemployment was high. But after mm -hmm. the Second World War, there was a great demand and the price went up. So everybody was it, went into sugar. Um, yes. Even, there were, Sugar, sugar cane was even grown in Bank Hall and Eagle Hall by the smallest oh, wow. of the small uh, landholders because the price was so good. The price oh. of sugar is what sustained all of those small landholders and through that area. Okay, next one. Okay, this is a 1991 aerial photo. If you look down, you can see all the... Um, the depressions. It's, it's a karst topog. It's called a karst topography. This is this is Bannatyne uh, Gardens. This is where the development is supposed to be going. This is um, on the other side, the, the south side of the uh, the ABC Highway. This used to be 
all sugar cane, but it's houses. So obviously the cannot you cannot get any agriculture down here now. Next okay. one. Okay, I I left this one blank. I just wanted to say that um, if you look on older maps, you will find that each plantation is made up of several small plantations. Um, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So next one. Okay, so right now you have, this would be 2,400 acres that um, they try to put all in golf and, um, and, and so on, which we fought. Um, this is Staple Grove. There's, there's some development down here. So at, um, at the Grove, uh, the, you'll see the depressions there as you pass. That's an accident waiting to happen. Um, this is Freer Pilgrim. Ridge, Small Ridge, Hope, Bannatyne, um, Newton, Wharton, Adams Castle. Next. Okay. Okay. This is these are the uh, the car. This is showing the car's topography on top of the Christ. What's known as the Christchurch Dome. All of these dots are sinkholes and uh, depressions. So wow. the water goes down, the water goes into the land very well. Um, when it doesn't go into the land, it will run off and you get flooding, as you as we saw. Next. Okay. This is the where the coconut vendors are here. No. This, this land here is red where you have the red um the, yes, I know. Okay, so you I know, know where I am. Yes. The coconut vendors, the coconut vendors are here, right? This is yes. Newton Plantation. When they scraped off all the topsoil, destroyed that uh -huh. for agriculture, a cave with it was exposed because it's a karst topography. Uh, this is a uh, old marrow hole here. This depression, I would hope that if they're actually going to change this into housing, that they don't scrape off all the all the mud, only to find that there are caves under here and depress and voids and so on that basically make it more expensive to build. It's not impossible to build, but it's more expensive to build. Next. Okay, this is a closer view of the area. You can, you can see the shadow of the uh, lip here. It's not a huge cave, but when you're building, it means it needs to be filled. You need to bring in marl. Um, anyway, that it, it just becomes more expensive to build. Next. These are this, not even with water. These, this is a, it was known as the freshwater lens that um, surrounds a lot of Barbados. Not a lot, not all. There's a, there's a little break here and there's some in St. Lucie. These are the uh, pumping stations in um, in Barbados. This would be Bell, um, Codrington, Newmarket, Hampton, Applewitz, Sweetville, Bowmanston. There are two, there are two um, spring, spring sources up here and then along here. What's happened is that you've almost um, maxed out. You, uh, you, what's available from these areas is, uh, is almost completely allocated. So putting more houses is not only a, a threat on the um, for agriculture and land, which is also reducing. It's also a threat for water, which has wow. been uh, which has been, right. So what was happened is that the island has actually re all of the. If you look at um, water resources study from 1978. The prediction was that by 19 mid 90s it would top. It would basically reach maximum extraction. You could not. This <laughs> there was no more water for development. What year did you say? Way. What year did they propose we will have maximum extraction? Nin the mid 1990s. What happened oh, in the mid 1990s was that. After the mid 1990s, was that the Water Authority put in a metering program? So everybody went on a meter. So right away, demand went down. Um, they have the price, the, the rates probably went up a bit. The rates are, way, are a way of um, basically curbing demand. But as you see, the more houses you build, the more demand there will be. So uh -huh. it does, anyway, that's life. Next one. Okay, so these were the, the various catchment areas. Each one of these catchment areas will supply enough water for each one of these pumping stations. So like these big, this is a big, this is a big area in the Bell area because it gets water from all, all through here. 
and Hampton yeah. area, same thing. This Bowman is on what is called a stream. Um, so that's a different way of getting water. But all of them together are almost maxed though. Next. Okay, I don't know if you can see this well, but this is from the Economic and Social Report. This starts in 1985. <clears throat> I don't know if you can zoom in a little bit. Okay. The point is that if you take the government's own figures, the 2005 Economic and Social Report, you'll find that the output, what Water what Authority extracted after the mid-1990s remained the same. And so after after time, they, they took out this, uh, they no longer publish this table because they're pumping the same amount of water. But, but there are two things that have happened. One is, one is the uh, is the metering I told you about, and the other yeah. is that the is the um, is the losses due to, to leaks and so on. I think they've got a lot better with that. Water authorities got a lot better with that. Otherwise, yeah. there's no way that we could get from 1995, 96 to 2024 with the same without with no more water. Well, okay, there's a quote unquote desalination plant that produces some, but there's no way we could have got there unless something happened to the demand to reduce it. Agree? Right. That's Next. what I'm here. I'm here saying, I mean, how could they be doing the same uh attracting the same amount? Yeah, that's that's what the figures seem to indicate to me. But again, maybe I'm not seeing everything. Next one. Okay, so these were the catchment areas. You have to think now, the Scotland district is not used. So somehow we have to find a way of getting water out of the Scotland district. One of the ways um, suggested from 78 was to make impoundments. But you know, and I know that when the water flows in the Scotland district, it sweeps everything away. Okay. So one of the ways I could think of doing it was to get a, is to actually pump the water from Long Pond and Green Pond, and that is, and they are fed by this large catchment. It's not all of the Scotland district, but it's, but you have that large catchment. Right. Pump that on top, on top of the. Um, again, it's just an idea. Maybe it's completely infeasible. Pump, pump that on top of the um, coral area. Let it go into the ground and. And it ends up inside a huge red, a, a large reservoir, right? And it's underground, so it does not storing water on the uh, in ponds is crazy because what happens is that the a lot of it is going to evaporate. You need okay. you need to store it underground. Okay, next. Okay, so back. Let's go back to Christchurch and agriculture. Here is the Bantine development. Right now, the freshwater lens, if you look at the ABC highway, actually extends into unused land. This you would say is oh, it's all rab land, it's not rab land, it's arable land that has been left to go into trees and all bush and shrub and all sort of thing. Yes, so there is water available under all of this. Out of this land that uh -huh. can irrigate, it's fed from this, this catchment, uh, and it goes, it actually goes down here, so as well, and up a little bit. So, there's water there that can irrigate a lot of this land. If you want, you could put it into sugar and then you wouldn't have to irrigate. But if you wanted to irrigate this uh -huh. area, there should uh -huh. be water here, right? So, there's a there's a sort of like a silver lining in the cloud. Yeah. Next. Wow. This one here. Can you recognize where this is? I'll give you a hint. This is the this is the Adams Airport. So this oh. is Corvey Villages. Oh wow. Here is an here is a lot of agricultural land to, to um Mr. Paul's point. You've got water here. What's supposed to go here? If you pass, you'll see the big sign up saying houses 
five hundred thousand dollars a piece. Or yes. go there. So that land, once you you can see that once this type of uh, built environment goes on top of this type of, this land, as far as agriculture is concerned, forget it. It's gone, right? Yeah. There's no there's no coming turning back. You may have all the water. You may have not all the water. You may have water here, right? That you could take out. Huh. Down here, down here would be Fairy Valley. Fairy Valley actually has a pump. And if you look closely here, you'll see that the government irrigates this area down here. It can irrigate this area down here. And a lot of small people work this land, mm -hmm. right? But if you want to expand, and you'll say that is a good idea. You can't. The policy used to be that the urban corridor on the south of the ABC highway could be developed. But no developments were supposed to come on the north side of the um, ABC highway. Well, you can see that really went by the way. Coverly really is an exception to what used to be a rule, but has long ceased to exist. Anyway, that is my that is my um, that is my presentation. So. Hopefully. Wow, I mean this is this is quite I mean very interesting and I see I see Kimar jumped in because um you know there there's so many persons since I've been into Barbados is saying that we are not water scarce and I know we're talking about um we're talking about Ballantine. I mean it's all related and um, and I think the reason you went through all of that to show us is that listen we could be doing some great agriculture here because of the, the the possibility of irrigation and if we don't irrigate we we, we could just do sugarcane because it naturally you know it works well with with the way how the water um flows there so let me ask you something before the others jump in on this um sir have you shown this to the officials to the to the to those who want to change the use of the I'm land going through that have that you had Repeat. I'm going through that process now. I'm going through that process now. Wow. Wow. This is so, I mean, you have Rommel. I'm I saying. Wrong. My background is in electrical and electronic engineering, not in civil engineering, not in water engineering. So I may be wrong, but I got interested in uh, water in 1987 and everything I could re put my hands on to read or to study. I've modeled, mo modeled the island and actually built the island in three dimensions. Um, so you can actually see all the gullies and, and the Christchurch dome and all that sort of thing. Um, so I wouldn't tell you that I, I don't know anything about water, I, but I would tell you that I know enough to know what I'm saying is 99%, wow. if not 100% true. I was very educated tonight. I know we were, but listen, we, we might have to bring you back on and go a little slower. Let me <laughs> let me ask, Mr. Murray, what are your thoughts on what you heard tonight? Can you do a quick um, analysis here? Yeah, I, I would. Um, I was fascinated about it. I had I know the area, the area fairly well, Ballantyne Garden. But what I would like to ask Mr. Knox or Mr. Paul is, you know, they always say, follow the money. Two things. What is the likely price what do you think the going rate? If it, let's assume it was um, approved for development of housing. And don't forget, the Prime Minister herself, as we spoke about last week, said that when you apply to a common country for development, there's a, certain, uh, there's a certain presumption of approval for development. So this presumption might already have gone to this development. But that apart, what do you think would be, assume it's approved for development, and how to, what do you think per square foot they'd like to sell for? What maybe twenty dollars? I don't know. Twenty dollars per twenty dollars. I don't know. It's about twelve acres. You're not gonna get all twelve acres, so but you can do the, the math. Okay. Twelve okay. By twenty by by sixty. And then so secondly, my second there's, there's, oh, hey. there's development my, my second, costs. Okay. You go ahead. Yeah. No, I I want to raise the point with I read the comments of the MP for the area, because when asked, have you approached the MP? Because the comments I saw in the paper from Mr. Strong, they not make sense. I was very disappointed. 
really bit a corner what the paper said this cold paper said he has directed the residents and the objectors to the talk to the country of the um planning and development mm. office for that uh, mm. is that the reaction you have you yourself spoken to mr strong or anybody to have any meeting with him to discuss or what had been his reaction i i haven't but i think the um the group some members of the group have so i i don't i i just basically concentrate on my little <laughs> my little area okay okay thank, thank you so much um, mr franklin I listened to the the presentation too, and I I know a little bit about about it. You know, I'm not a water person. I I drink a beer, that's it. But um, I know enough um about Corvally because many years ago I was a director of a credit union that wanted to purchase Corvally for uh for our cultural purposes. What the what they were what we were planning to do is to make it into smaller agricultural lots because because a lot of our um members had lost their jobs during the government restructuring and we wanted to equip them with at least the means to earn a living and hence then to pay their loans and we we went and we had drawings we had everything done but the land was essentially to remain in agriculture because that was a condition uh -huh. So you could have had an agricultural lot with one house. Next thing you know, the credit union lost that opportunity. They didn't bother with us anymore. And then it's gone into a, a, a glorified slum. Because it, it, it's, it's just concrete. I have the concrete, some small houses. I sell them for a lot of money. It glanced, sell you, follow the money. And that's what this is all about, following the money. People don't, you see... That is the proverbial golden goose. In agriculture, you will be earning money over every week, every month, every year. But it will take time to become a millionaire if you ever become a millionaire in agriculture. <laughs> no, All right, no. um, you know. Um, but when you take that agricultural land and and you sell it for housing, the price then skyrocket. So you can take two fields, a few acres, and that would make you a millionaire. Mm -hmm. and, and that is where it is all about. The money. People are, people are saying short term. And they feel that we can then, because Guyana got a lot of land in Surrey, I've got a lot of land, we could go and get our food and things from Guyana and send our black belly sheep down to Guyana to get the foot rotten off. And um, then, but what will happen, let's say we had... Uh, um, and a government in one of those countries that wasn't so favorable to Barbados because the president, um, Surinamese government, isn't so favorable to Barbados because the prime minister went and got herself tied up with about to say the murderer. And she was down there singing with them, dancing and all kind of stuff. I got, I got the video somewhere I can show you. So they're not so pleased with her. So I don't think we're going to get the kind of produce out of Ghana. But if you are producing it at home, you will get it. And you will get it first because it is very hard to export produce from Barbados. And our prices will come down. I see people selling yams at eight dollars a pound. I used yeah. to buy I used to dig yams at Vaucluse out there where you where they have the um restaurant now. I I dug yams in that field. And it hurt my heart to see um the put the you can't get yams out there anymore. You get Every so often, you used to get a, a, um, a, a, rest, a rest meeting. So, the, so no vault clues, content, Dunscombe, all of these things are out of our culture, just into, just waiting their turn to become like Valentine because people want to be millionaires. People want to be rich. At the Lydia Hill, you know, at, just above Rock Hall, St. Thomas, there's a housing development there that used to be on primary cultural land and then on the other side of the road where there's no um where's the content pavilion on the other side of the road another area of primary cultural land that is also in housing so everything is going to housing and they, help, and they got a lot of rob land why don't you use the rob land it is it is more 
uh, it is the, the agricultural land is more accessible and it's cheaper to develop so they're going for that government and i'm not talking about barbers the party government i'm talking about both of them over time have been destroying agriculture to make their friends rich and yeah. soon from now we will have to import everything we eat because they ain't got no place to buy them except you do that my wife and plant a few things outside in cans <laughs> Every, everybody trying to plant to plant something now um but mr franklin you're very very well versed on this topic here i didn't even realize that but you know i'm, I'm thinking i'm looking at the time here 9 16 this can't be one show you know mr franklin this can't be one show i think it, it was so mr Knox. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, Mr. Paul, thank you all for coming on tonight because I have learned so much. I have learned so much. I didn't even when you were talking about World War II and 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 us feeding ourselves, and I was like, oh, I didn't know these things. It was so much information that we were we were getting there on this topic. I want to ask Mr. Paul, what do you want to say to Barbados before we go tonight? What What do you want to What What message you want to, in light of all that we've not, we've said tonight? Um, what do you want to say to Barbados before we go? I, I want to say to Barbadians that you need to respect our agriculturalists, because you know one of the things I have noted in this country is that we have a habit of thinking that because these people here. In some cases, you know, we and, and I will say this now, we always use race to divide our people, mm -hmm. especially politicians get at doing this. Although you know I was wrong, right? But the point is, politicians are always good at using race to divide people on sound arguments. I hope we don't use this occasion to do that. But respect our agriculturalists because sometimes we don't seem to recognize that the arguments that we make hold water, okay. And I, I really want to appeal to people, do not think that agriculture cannot make an even more significant contribution to the economy of Barbados. Look, you, it was pointed out, when we had COVID, the agricultural sector yes. stepped up in a big way, very big way. As a matter of fact, we had some of the best production in years when it comes to fruit crops. All right? Now, it seems every time there's, and you know, I have no, noticed it, that every time there's a crisis, it's only when there's an economic crisis in this country that every government seems to remember the farmers need to pay for a role and we need to provide resources. But we don't understand that what needs to happen is that if these, we have to hold faith before farmers. And sometimes, you know, the problem is too, I've said so before, that you have people outside of agriculture who they don't depend on a living for agriculture, but those are the people sometimes who get listened to, mm -hmm. not the salt of the earth <coughs> farmer who basically sent school the children, educated them properly, okay, pay the bills out of it, and who depend for a living out of it, right? But you see, the problem is that the construction magnet. I know I I I am not in the construction field. I have nothing against um, persons in the construction field, but I think that we are reaching. To, you know, I heard one a construction magnet say one day that he would like to litter every square foot of Barbados with houses. Every square foot. And I get the impression, when I listen to people talking sometimes, when you go to these meetings, when they're talking about approvals, so I get the impression that that is the mantra. Let yeah. me litter Barbados, every square foot of Barbados with houses, without considering the impact that we have on the ability to produce. Mm -hmm. And one last point I want to leave with you. Yes. It is this, we forget that when we take one acre that we think we're taking out of agriculture, an additional two acres get taken out. You know why? Because once you put agriculture, non-agricultural non activities in an area, it compromises agriculture in the surrounding areas. We mm -hmm. see it constantly. Pig farmers in this country are constantly under threat from people who want to go and build they come in an the area, they build a nice fancy house. The fellow making a living from pigs all the life or chickens or whatever, no complaints, nobody have no problem, but you build a nice fancy house and the poor man who's making a living, feeding his family out of it, he is told, oh, you are a nuisance now. It's the person that bring the house is a nuisance. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
and and the thing a sad thing is that we have very little sympathy sometimes from tongue plan and all these people right because somehow they get dazzled by the rich they get dazzled by the rich because you know they, they these people don't count but somehow we, we we need to look if we are saying as barbarians that we really care for each other we are serious about food security we are serious about trying to provide opportunities for our young people to make a success out of agriculture. We need to review what we are doing. And yeah. when I see large tracts of land coming out of agriculture like this, we have to be worried. And we need to put them those requests under greater scrutiny. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Paul. And um, Mr. Knox, what um, we, we, you know you're, you're guys coming back because this is an area that I love. I, I want you to, what do you want to say to Barbadians tonight on behalf of the people of Bannantyne? Bannantyne, sorry. We are just one area. There are a lot more areas, right? All over Barbados. Um, so if you, if you really appreciate when the land really works and produces, uh -huh. stand up and make some noise. <clears throat> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People are saying, one thing, I would say one thing uh -huh. that it is really construction. Construction is really a dead end economic activity because if there's no water, or if the water is so uh, constrained, right? Yeah, there might be ways around it and so on. But um, if it's so constrained, what is the point of building any building? There's no, I mean, if you can't supply it with water, what's the point? Mm. Is what's the point of building hotels in, in Bridgetown? Sewage is an issue. Getting rid of the sewage is an issue. Water is an issue. Everything. I mean, it's almost like no point to doing this at all. So really and truly, we really need to sit down and use and think what we are doing for the future. It's not construction is not is not going to do it for us. Yes. Yes. Um, everybody's saying we need to bring you guys back. I would love to for you to come back and bring some more residents. Um, this this education is important. If you had anything else you wanted to say, any other slides, this is a space, and we are we are we're for it. We're here for it, um, gentlemen. We're mm -hmm. here for the education. Trust me. All right. Thank you so much for coming, and um, and we are going to have you back. Thank you, sirs. God bless you, and okay. we are going to follow what you're doing and to see how the show can can assist okay thank you very much thank you thanks God a bless. lot yes. thank you bye bye, you too. bye. Yes. wow that that was that was that was really good i know it's 9 23 and kaz will have stuff to share and kima has stuff to share and and miss corbin begged you wanted to come on to set some record straight or something that happened on brass tacks so I'm trying to figure where do I go now? Where do I go now? Um, let me go to to um let me go to Caswell and let me keep Kimar for last. All right, but we're gonna go over more than likely, um, guys, if you allow me, uh, we will go to 10 30 tonight because these two gentlemen and Miss Corbin, they have to say what they have to say. Kimar, Caswell is coming at you, and Kimar gonna be, you know, quite hot tonight. Go ahead, um, Mr. Franklin. You're, you're muted, sir. Go ahead. You're, yes. There were a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. So I will do them very quickly. Um, the first one deals with the, Ch the um, these Chinese houses. Because that led me from, you see, when you're, when you're checking one thing, you're brought up on a lot of other things. Yes. And, um, I found out through interviewing some people who I've known over the years who work in critical areas. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I heard on Brass Tax, um, Peter Wickham, saying that Dwight Sutherland should be dismissed or resign or something so because of this, 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 this scandal. And from what I've been hearing from people at, in the know, I'm not going to say where, where, where they are actually from. Dwight Sutherland had little or nothing to do with the, Chinese, with, the, with the Chinese houses. The Chinese houses were the baby mm -hmm. of 
William Duguid. He pushed them against the advice of his officials in the ministry. They, they, assured, they assured him, there will be no way you can get these houses to Barbados in the time frame that he was saying. But this East West Housing Company, that's where you want Kimar to come and help me check because they want to know who they are. They can buy these houses through these people and they were supposed to be emergency houses and they're not supposed to be permanent. Anyway, as a matter of fact, the houses were only designed to last for seven years, mm -hmm. seven to 10 years. Nobody builds a house in Barbados and want to collapse on them in seven years. It, it, is, it, is, it, it is emergency housing. It is, it was not, even the manufacturers will let you know up front, it is only a short term, like where you got uh, hurricanes or floods or whatever, you put these things up fast and they don't last too long because but the people are in them, they um, are thinking about getting out. One friend of mine suggested that all you have to do with these houses is to put that chicken wire in them and there'll be coops <laughs> and, a, a, and a place for the chickens to lay. And you will got some little coops. They're small, they're not designed for expansion. So it, it is, it is, it was just that. But then the government changed and Glenn, I, I am glad because Glenn spoke a night about primus into Paris, meaning first among equals. The prime minister is the first and all the other ministers are equals. There's no such thing in our system as a senior minister. But because the prime minister is not in Barbados, to do her work because she's supposed to supervise the ministers. That's her job. First among equals. All are equal, but she's first. And so she has then assigned some people called senior ministers to supervise groups of ministers. This is unheard of in our system of government, but she ain't, got, she ain't around the place to supervise them. So she had to delegate that duty to somebody else. So Duguid continued mm. up to about last month, I understand, to be responsible for these, um, this, 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 um, Chinese metal um, steel house project, S T E E L. You know, I, I'm very careful. Somebody was suggesting an A. Eh, Chinese steel house. That's, that's what it means. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, but nobody told me, so I said, well, you mean, but there were lots. You can't be A. But, you know, I'm not too bright. So these things would um, trick me. But anyhow, these steel houses were doing this project up to about a month ago. They will run into the ground, and now I understand Dwight Sutherland can't come out and say anything. Hmm. He can't defend himself because he's not allowed to defend himself. So when people are attacking the, the poor fellow, he might not be the best minister in the world, but this time he has no responsibility whatsoever. He is assigned now to clean up Dugan's mess. And Nobody and decent enough to say somebody said you're holding up any of the stick to say, Oh, it was it didn't really do it, you know, because by only got his things last month, last month or February, I think it was the end of February or something like this. But he had no responsibility, he had nothing to do with the construction. When they told you get the told do get the told do get okay, you're muted. You're muted. Okay, unmute your yes, yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. They said when, the, when these officials explained the big it, you just can't say a house can cost so much and so much without taking into consideration. What why are you, you have you gotten so low that you're you're low? Mm. That you have to get a foundation. You have to you have to cater for that and put it in the price. But no, he was oh, there's a rush. I don't know why he wouldn't take advice. I know everything is hit the fan, thanks to Kimar. Kimar, Kimar, Kimar exposed the whole thing. I know that they're, 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 they're battling and, 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 the, and they have to find a convenient scapegoat. The convenient um, um, scapegoat. Mr. Franklin, it seems like your mic, the, 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 the mic there is not on. It's it sound like it's coming straight from your computer. The sound is really low. Is the mic on? Yeah, but the, the mic is on. I don't know what's happening. 
Okay, go ahead, please. You know, and so I was saying that the this this is powerful, the course, because this is how they're behaving. You must also remember, and I'm not going to talk about the the, the, the um computer um test, other than to say that everybody was saying that K McConney, K McConney, K McConney, K McConney. K McConney came in in 2022. The first survey was done the year before K McConney became, ever became a minister. So the project started before she did, but nobody got up and said, not even K could come up and define herself. So it's same as though, if you are a, a sacred cow in, in the Mali administration, when projects go off the rails, you stick it at somebody else like Sutherland, and then when they get, when they get caught with this nastiness with the, with the thing, then you, 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 um, like, because the project with the, the, um, computer test started in the Ministry of Education when Santia was the Minister of Education. Uh -huh. But nobody, most people in Barbados do not know that. All they know about Santia is $7,500, but there's more. I had to get right in my very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so that, that is, that is what is happening. So the, the, the houses, so what it was that checking and seeing, they wanted to find out what would the cost the people, what is that again? Yeah, yeah, you're so low. I can, I, there's uh, somebody sorry, saying, you're, you're, closer here. Better? no, no, your hand hit something, but we can't figure it out. No, your hand hit something. I believe I can. I remember when you were talking and gesticulating, and your hand hit something. Keep going. Uh, oh yes, uh, yes, it's back. It's back. Okay. Mm. So when I was checking, mm -hmm. you know, I said a bit something. These people have to pay property transfer tax and all these little houses that are going to last for seven years. Have to be quite common. I heard the people said they're going to sell them. Yeah. And that brought me to be checking into something, and then something fell off a truck. You know, these trucks don't secure their um their their their, their um garb, their, their stuff. You know, and I discovered uh, one of the things that blew off was a document addressed to Mr. Bjorn Bjorkum, Chairman of Coral Beach Limited, Port St. Charles, Haywards, St. Peter. Oh Lord! This was dated 2021, and it says here. I'm directed to inform you that the Minister of Finance, Economic Affairs, and Investment has granted approved developer status to Coral Beach Limited under the Special Development Areas Act, CAP 237. Mm -hmm. And they said then, please note that the waivers will be implemented administratively pending the preparation of the relevant legislation. So what it seems to me is that they were giving him tax breaks without any without the legislation or right. in place. I don't know because I didn't check, but this, this is what the letter says. And while it was trying to catch all these different papers, you know, because there were so many blowing about, I caught another one. Yes. So hold a minute, uh, hold a minute. Let's, some, let's get, so what is it, what is the essence of that? Because we get, we caught up in the joke. Let's get the essence of what what's happened. Now, this one, this one, because under the Special Development Areas Act, mm -hmm. um, approved developers get certain concessions. And I'm wondering, but that's what I mean about the, the, um, the concessions that these rich people get. Mm -hmm. and, and and I happened to, to butt up on one a completion statement. It was one of the documents that blew away. I even had to put my foot on to stop it from going. And this was about a house value about $900,000. And the government with the, under this thing, the, you know, you pay the stamp duty about, about $9,000, um, roughly. And then they say, The um, property transfer tax zero. Hmm. You don't pay the property transfer tax. The property transfer tax is about nineteen thousand dollars, and they understand the development that there has about twenty one or twenty something houses. So you imagine you are giving the rich people tax breaks, property transfer tax breaks, and all kind of stuff, 
And at the same time, this is 2021, when these people were given these concessions. But that is when the government was trying to get every cent tax, taking away people's um, money, taking away their bonds, taking away everything, but giving breaks to Birkham. I don't understand it. Taxing water, taxing the little man with a pipe in the yard for um, paying $32. And if you check your water bill now, you will see that and if you're a fellow like me, and don't and, and don't use much water, as I tell you, only drink and bear with some, and I can go call it one of those bearing things now too. Um, the um, water I am paying more taxes than what for than the water that than they use for water. Yeah, Kima was actually telling us that a while back. But yeah, you know, but I I, I I actually checked it, so I uh, so I can go. Out of, I don't know, and the thing is, it is it is hurtful. Because millionaires who live in their house and they got my they got a pool, they're paying the same forty-five dollars for water and sewage as me, who don't get paid every month. You know? Well who some months don't get paid at all. So but, but Mr. Franklin, I, I this is still baffling me. So you're saying the development the developer of Port Port Ferdinand and, and is it Port Central? They, they, they call it Coral Beach. Um Coral Beach Limited, and this is place called Long Long Road View, in in, in Saint Peter, but the address of Beacon is Port Saint Charles. Okay, and and you're saying for a rich man like that, they waived. What, they why 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 these why these um any person who could afford to um pay a house for um nine hundred thousand dollars. This property transfer tax, you know, shouldn't be a big thing. Not when you got about nineteen thousand dollars in debt, a nine hundred thousand dollar property, you know, and you waiving the taxes for a transaction like that, but squeezing the smallest man in Barbados, the poor fella out there who had a pipe in the yard, no indoor plumbing, just one pipe in the yard, and he's paying more taxes. Now water because he used to pay thirty-two dollars for the pipe. Right. Now he's paying um forty-five dollars or something. You you get you it, it more tax. You, you you I can't bid with um with tax. But this but they're taking it they're taking it away. I, I I I suspect what the government is doing is saying, well look, they they've got so many poor people, so we can afford to get the rich people a break, and we can milk the poor people. Because the, the people that got the kind of money who can buy a nine hundred thousand dollar house and that kind of thing, yeah, leave them alone. We don't need. We can. We can take. Um, we can juggle the eyes of the small people. Got got a lot of them, but these are the same small people that run those red red shirts, you know. But they don't understand the evil yeah. that they're buying. They're, buying, they're bought into, you know. You know, came out. I don't know much about property transfer taxes and stuff, but that's why I'm glad. That you were here because I know you you that you deal with those type of things, but yeah, I I don't understand. You know they said here they said vendor is not requiring a share to be a portion. This is the um property transfer tax because the tax gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm Mr. Franklin. We we need to dig in all of these things tonight. We seem to be there's such big. Each of these are big issues on their on their own, and um, you know, uh, we 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 need to delve into this one some more because we, it would be interesting to know how many other um of these rich developers um they're waiving the property transfer taxes for. By you. Now, if you are a developer, let's say Glenn has a piece of land down at Spooner's Hill that his grandfather left, and Glenn won't develop that. He is not a special, um, an approved developer, so his projects got the people, they got paid probably transfer tax for all of them. Glenn got a lot of money, never had. But he got, the, the people dealing with him, he got, they got to find it. But yeah. mi millionaires and billionaires and Barbados don't have to pay these taxes because they get they can tell them I won't be an approved developer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, approved developer, you when you're selling the property, you don't go collect or pay or whatever the property transfer taxes just don't exist for you. Yeah, these things are wrong. Yeah, 
you know, you li that's this person saying this happened with all these big developments. We got to shut this place down. My water bill is now 150 from 80. And that, that's the reality here. And rich people on here, they're you, whether white, because you have some so some rich black people too. So we want to, you're wealthy, you get you get away. You get away uh, and, and you don't you're not paying. It's not fair. It's not fair, and that's where I get all heated. You know, but um tonight, guys, we're going to we are going to 1030 officially tonight. Will you stay with us? Will a fourteen hundred of you, a fourteen or eight of you are stay with us. It's going to it was going good. Miss Corbin is coming on here before Kimar. Kimar is coming, so I know you will stay. Uh, Miss Corbin is coming on, but Mr. Casual, that was that was brilliant, and we need more of that. We need you to come on, right? There's only one thing I want to say: that Glenn, I want one of those lots in your political development. <laughs> <laughs> you you get the biggest and a corner lot too. A corner lot. In 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 a <laughs> Let me just um let me just bring on uh, Miss Corbin um is coming on to set the record straight on something very important. Uh, Miss Corbin, and I know we t we talk about ten minutes. We might have to cut this down to say seven. We can't go because you see I'm out of time, right? So um do your best for me. Go ahead, welcome, ma'am. Welcome. I feel like I'm rushing you. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. Pardon me. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. And I'm very pleased to be here. And uh, um, an excellent, excellent um, show with all the other presenters who have gone before. And before I, I make my quick submission, I would like to ask of, of, of Glyne and Mr. Murray, as well as Kazra, Mr. Franklin, um, about that position that Jessica Odell has, um, the director of protocol. When was that office um, created and has that made redundant the work and the purpose of the permanent secretary in the prime minister's office? because I'm seeing you with the signing at the Kensington Oval, Miss Odell was carrying out the role of director of protocol. What is that role? When was it created and has it displaced the PS? Um, moving on, why am I here, Marcia? Yes. I am here because of something that was drawn to my attention in a chat to which I belong, drawn to our attention by someone who is in the diaspora and who listens to this show, that person's on this show right now listening, and who happened to be listening to Brass Cats yesterday. And the person noticed and I will quickly refer to what the person said. Uh, so I've made my notes quickly. The person said that they were listening to brass stats and uh, took a few minutes to listen to brass stats today. The moderator, um, Dr. Christina Hines, referred to the Marseille show as a ride tag group. I couldn't, um, she said that this rich couldn't believe what she was hearing. I phoned her because I had missed it and I wanted to make sure that this, she had heard right. And she contextualized it for me. I held, I tried calling, brass tacks um, to speak to Dr. Hines, but I was on hold for about 35 minutes on my cell phone, so I didn't get through. The show ended. Um, the person sent me the clip, um, an, uh, an audio 
of that. Um, for those of us who are here, there was a male caller who had called into brass tacks and the conversation was about the leadership of Dr. Ronnie Yearwood, Yearwood, sorry, of the DLP, the president of the DLP. And the caller was, you know, giving credit to the things that um, Dr. Yearwood would have done. And he spoke of what um, they have said that he brought about 600 um, new members to the party. And I transcribed because the same individual sent me the audio and I tried to, to transcribe the conversation. The caller asked, where were the 600 persons when um, Caswell Franklin, he called the names, Caswell Franklin, Marcia Weeks, Ferdinand Nichols, and Kima Schroet were taken to the streets. And uh, Dr. Christina Hines responded, maybe they were not interested in what in, take, in what they were taking to the streets for, they, meaning those persons, Caswell, Kima, Ferdinand, Nichols, Marcia Weeks, and those of us who participated in the march, drawn primarily from this group here, this collective. She said that maybe they were not interested in what they were taking to the streets for, or perhaps um, they were not interested in taking to the streets with them. And with them had a very, um, a, a, a very disparaging emphasis. Um, because it may be something I may be interested in, she's now speaking in, in, in the first person, it may be something I may be interested in, but I may not, I don't think that she's meaning I herself, but she is saying this may be the reasoning, that's how I am um, interpreting it. it. It may be something I may not be interested in, but it may be something that I may be interested in, but I may not be interested in joining any ragtag group that is carrying the issue. And then she quickly realized, I believe realized what she had said. And she said, not to call them a ragtag group, but that is an example. It was already an example that we are likened to a right type group. So the callers said, but it is the right type that is suffering. And it is the right type group that is um, allegedly, that you allege want to help. The person said, look, this right type group that you're calling them, they're suffering and they won't help. And she went on then to speak about the leadership, the work went into leadership. And she went on to say that maybe persons did not join us from that 600 because they, they don't want to be led by those who, who they cannot believe in. Um, they, 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 they may be questioning or concerned about the motivation of persons leading the march. Maybe they're concerned, um, that is the concern that some people have about following this right type group. She didn't repeat it, but already that is what we've been described as. And 
if you know I again I did my 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 uh, research. I know what the right what right tag means, but I really wanted to 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 um you know be sure a right tag group right tag group is a disorganized group of persons perceived as disreputable, undesirable. Uh, it comprises diverse um, elements. And another synonym for it is um, refract or motley, not motley, motley crew. We have come up with that. And I just want to say here, if I had reached her, I would have said the following, that I identify myself and say the following, that this right type group is putting persons like herself and others in government on it. We have got them frantic. And if the perception, if it's a demeaning, disparaging um, 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 term to use to describe persons, if the perception is there that we're disorganized, why are we having each night these large numbers and persons sharing what we uh, um, um, our show and those who are known to the public these are the right type people tonight mr knox and mr paul who are experts in the field chose to join the right type group but the core right type group here the panelists and this is for those of those out there who want to label us. Let's look at Marcel Weeks, a renowned producer, producer in the film in, uh, industry, an award-winning person of a uh, 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 nat uh, nationally and internationally at international film festivals we also look at reverend dr ferdinand nichols who brought bmw to barbada um a talented man his voice can has been heard internationally as a singer as a preacher as a social activist as well as a leader no one question his credibility within the clergy. Then we look also at, 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 at Caswell Franklin, a right tag member. He represents, you know, he's a walking archive. He, he, he represents issues that persons at this particular time are afraid or do not dare to bring into the public domain. We can sit and learn at his feet about government and governance. And they're talking also about Maxine McLean, a former senator and minister of foreign affairs in the last um, government and who led uh, government business in the upper house for a term longer than that of Dr. Christina Hines, whose term was shorter and shortened. And Dr. I'm talking about Maxine. Maxine was a founding member of Taz Revitae of COB. Maxine is a, 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 was a tutor of many years, a lecturer of many years, at, at university and management and, 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 and government at university actually is still had, held in high esteem by the alumni, which we um, are needs. Then we have uh, Kimar Stewart. 
came out towards his the the the, 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 the uh vector behind the the, the his you know vector vector exposed your vector he must is exposing so much in terms of economics in terms of things that are hidden that are being revealed he must is keeping them on their toes then we have um mr murray who joined us recently and mr murray is she calling or associating right I, um a sort of uh, synonyms or, or a term with mr murray who was a minister of state in the oil uh, government and was also a, a an ambassador do we represent we're not boastful i'm not even talking about myself your humble servant and all the others out there who participate with the mr nigel newton a brilliant brain and presenter this is this is what is happening out there when they're not insulting us on the airwaves they're insulting us in the lower and upper house and people this is what the majority the last person i heard calling us misfits if they also the term right tag is associated with a right. marching band originating again marcia in in in, in the african american down south uh, it is when they went out to march they did not have the proper equipped instrument so they had an odd collection of instruments that didn't have uniforms but they played good marching music yes and yeah. amongst us right type with though we may be seen as and although she said i don't mean to call them that but i um uh, that's just an example but that's what she means to call us and we send a message out there that we march to a beat door right tag we are we march to a beat that is mobilizing hundreds behind us and whether that 600 comes whether and by their messages they are certainly trying to dissuade people not to be part of a movement like this and, and it would play on your psyche and your mind but as the caller said it's the right type who is suffering all right it's the right type who needs help and i'm encouraging us here in, in in this movement to keep focus and let us keep marching to the right type beat and every night we are attracting persons of caliber of intelligence of sound knowledge and information to inform and educate so i just want the message to get out there that those who sit on those calling programs use the opportunity like the founder, one of the early persons, like Father Andrew Hatch, like like the late um, Matthew Farley, like the same Maxine McLean, use those spaces to educate and not to denigrate and not to put down and not to insult and not yeah. to, to, to insinuate and, 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 and provoke people to, 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 to um, start questioning the validity of movements like this. Yes. Use your time wisely to inform yes. and educate. Thank you, Marcia. But I yes. just have to get that. Yes, I know. I know. And I, you're and talking. I am proud to be part of this rag tag team. And <laughs> let me tell those out there. Marcia yes, real quickly, real not, quickly, um, literally half a minute. Um, yes, um, 
and I'm saying that half a minute to inform those who are out there. Marcia Weeks did not recruit me. Marcia Weeks did not ask me to come on her show. I called Marcia after I saw the, the, the staging of, of the consultations, the public meetings on, on education reform and how they were so playing so lightly with it. I called Marcia and I asked her if she would give me space on this platform to speak about education reform. I chose to be part of this right eye group. I chose to be led by persons like Marcia and Caswell and Kimar and Maxine and, and, and now Mr. Murray and all else who will join us in making yes. Barbados a better place. Thank you very much, everybody. Yes. Thank That's you. That's right. And we're wearing the rock tag with pride. So thank you so much, um, um, Ms. Corbin. And you will come back. Um, you're, you're going to be on on Friday. I'm sure you're going to talk more about this. Thank you so much. Let's let's jump in Thank with you. Kimar because I know Mr. Mr. Franklin gonna get all over this right now. But um, uh, Mr. Kimar, good night, sir. How are you doing? You're you're from the Riff Rock Band, the Rock Tag Band, the Unkempt. That's what Riff Rock Tag means. Disorganized group. Hi, Kimar. Hi. Good night. <laughs> yes, hey. sir. Yeah, yeah, well, good night to you, Marcia, uh, Caswell, um, Rose. I know it's late, uh, but good night to everybody on the show, on the program. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I, I want to start Christina Hines refer to me as a, a, a person with maverick tendencies. Right? So I, 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 I sometimes don't. Um, <laughs> Ruffle my own feathers with some of the comments these moderators would make. Um, have no personal issues with Christina Hines, no qualms. Uh, so she's entitled to say what she has to say because that is the reason Brass Arts has been put there to become a soapbox for people who are saying to, uh, to look, they, they took Coraline directly from Brass Arts. Boom, put him in the city and break down to run in the seat. Mm -hmm. Next election, I guarantee you we're going to see some other people from brass stats Correct. at the polls. <laughs> so, so that is why brass stats is there to, to help facilitate some who have uh, political ambitions. So they are very well inclined to do so. My thing is these same people watch the Mars show. Right? These same people sit every night, watch take reference to influence their city work that we're doing so um i understand i understand i understand <laughs> but nevertheless I, I was listening earlier to some of what was being said that i didn't mind to take it all um i wanted to thank rose for her uh representation of us and to let them know they refer to us as anarchists uh the city were terrorists mm -hmm treasonous treasonous uh Kazo, you know they say oh you must they must say that they lend you four hundred dollars right mm -hmm. <laughs> all type of things <laughs> they, they will say about, about so i i i don't think but this thing about land right in 1994 when Oinafa won the government, right? Oinafa passed a piece of legislation in Barbados, uh, which is called the Investment Sector Bill. And this bill was so roughly about 30 something million or cheap, almost no money at all, which then allowed lands, prime agricultural lands to be sold in Barbados which gives right which gave rise to the west coast the, the platinum coast right so a lot of the prime agricultural lands between 1994 and 2008 
or a swaddle under the guise of investment. Right? So a lot of these big million dollar houses that you see, when people like Eugene Melnick and, and those Canadians that had large monies, yeah. when they migrated into Barbados, that bill in which when David Thompson was Minister of Finance, and when uh, first can sign it for proper miss when he was Minister of Finance, they both refused to sign this bill, you know, because the bill, like what we have in now with this Ballantine area, allowed the government at the time to sell out all of the prime spots. Right? So, you know, Sandy Lane was refurbished in during that, that that period a lot of these golf kingsland golf course mm. you know all, all of this type of thing and mr not gonna told you a little bit about that kingsland area so so a lot of these golf type investments which was to match the new foreign investment that barbados had we lost so much agricultural land like for not housing for many people but housing for one million dollar houses with gates that you could have heard maids and drivers and that is how people got jobs in the tourism sector you know mm -hmm. and it, 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 there was no real big blow in terms of hiring barbadians at the management level senior management level because if you look at the structure of the hotel uh sector in barbados is still the same right but no what we're having is government trying to subdivide the land here although the residents are saying to them that the land is water in a water zone right so, so you have to check to see before if Ballantyne was indeed in a zone one area mm -hmm. right because remember the the, the changes of the land zones in right. the Barbados water Authority and remember act they would have to know that that water harvests itself in that area right they would have to know so what i'm saying here is we need to get checked back to when santia Raja, as the minister of water resources passed that legislation which i know the minister of planning and development which is do good right those 3737 hectare acres that were freed up for investment lands that were previously in zone ones but are now in zone b's and zone eight zone one gets smaller which is no zone a and all type of lands that were once in zone one no longer in zone one so we have to see if this balloting area was in there along with all the other land plots which would have been in zone one areas which you can build on all of a sudden now and then repeating scientists words that it is now free for investment which means people can buy it off mm -hmm. right so this is the same thing you know marcia that happened in 1994 when on alpha signed that investment sector bill right because the intention is to move wealthy people into barbados and allow these wealthy people to then create and provide jobs not high paying jobs obviously but low income uh maid butler driver gardener um secretary if they create a business then they bring in the expats to manage the senior level jobs and, and they give the, the, the barbarians the lower level jobs right so what we might see here is a project intended to facilitate non-national construction companies to be able to build houses you know because the complaint from the construction companies is that non-national countries a, a, a company from guyana they say is getting all of the construction work really yeah right and this was a complaint by a guy i think his name was called michael a, a rasta rasta gentleman who was speaking as saying that the small contractors Mm -hmm. are hardly getting any any of the construct construction work so this big blow construction boom the men at the bottom are not getting the work the same thing like what anderson cherry was saying in terms yes. of real work in construction though the government is like, stepping local artisan local construction companies 
and are importing construction companies and, and these construction companies are getting most of the government contracts right i have a name of it but i don't want to see the name of it tonight <laughs> right. right that that is what is happening so i support the call from james paul and from mr knox that we need to keep agricultural land in agriculture because there are so many areas that you could build housing on you know if, if you really want to develop where you don't go and get the whole project finished right like, why don't they go and get the title deeds transfer and go and, and finish build but the land that the whole project on is prime agriculture land too <laughs> right so they took up that soft nice land at pool and st john which was agricultural plantation land which could we could be put in a production and help us to reduce the fuel import bill i have some things to say about that as well because i heard um the minister of energy lisa cummings today all over the news speaking about uh barbados's energy bill right getting people some work in agriculture helping to put food on our tables but what the government is doing is seeking to run ahead with construction projects because they know as long as blocks and cement go lay money go pay yeah right and construction projects are prone for corruption they're the, they're the easiest target to get kickbacks right to get kickbacks from thing but i see a comment here somebody saying that i said then that this was the beginning of the destruction of agriculture agriculture is under attack one because the minister in itself for all complaints seem not to be capable of handling any job second thing second the policies of the government seem to be killing farmers small farmers i i think james would put a problem ahead of that right so the garbage on sewage tax on water bills killing the farmers right you, you remember a clip came up with some farmers at st john yeah young farmers at st john, where the prime minister went up to the farmers and ha had some discussions with them and when the story came up after it was said that the prime minister asked the farmers not to come in the media and say what she promised them oh really <laughs> yeah the guy came back and said that he don't want to come and divulge on the thing what was what was agreed to and what was promised to them by the prime minister hey the feed the feed program i said i did the feed program so i could tell you i did government's feed program right it was a good idea but poor execution a lack of allocation of resources a big right? rat tag it was a big rat tag disorganized go ahead yeah right so they gave people land with no water on it yes right? i know that yes then they were only giving you one they tell you to get out of five acres then when you done you hear it only get one then you can hear well it all down in st lucy or in st john right so so there was no real good conceptualization of that feed program and as far as I know, no, food security is really being transferred um, in a very serious way towards the Chinese, as the Chinese are very heavily embedded now in agriculture and Barbados is food security. Right? So I saw to this evening a project on television speaking about the Chinese in partnership with locals to grow rice in Barbados. Right? And it was this big project. Uh, between the university and the West Indies, uh, Jukes, uh, and the Chinese as well, to do with agriculture. Right? Fisheries is a big area. And the sea is a big area that the Chinese and the Japanese have a very heavy interest in. Right? And that is part of food security as well, you know. Right. So, soon from now, um, Barbados sign on to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative along with some other. You will see some Chinese and Japanese ships 
fishing in Barbadian and Caribbean waters for fish, right? For export back to China, and then we gotta buy it back from the Chinese, although it's our fish. Much of what we do with the oil right now and sugar, right? So we plant sugar, planted sugar here, exported the sugar for cheap money overseas, and then had to buy back that sugar at international prices. That didn't make any sense to me. Right? We do it with oil. We drill for crude oil. We find the oil. The oil got to go to Trinidad and then we got to buy it back from Trinidad at the refinery. Right? So, uh, right. So you see how I started <laughs> for where we started, yeah. but we carried off. It is so yeah, many it, it was so many things tonight and so you you gave you gave some comments on that which is quite interesting i have some things here um, written down that is quite interesting to to hope i can take a peek at it but i know you have another topic that you wanted to to touch on tonight yeah i, I think we went through this um uh, already on the show and today i saw an article from the Minister of Energy, Lisa Cummings, speaking at a conference in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, sorry, not Dubai, Saudi Arabia, right? Uh, Saudi Arabia, if, I, if I'm sure, is part of the United Arab Emirates, right, Kaza? You're, you're muted, Kaza. Wait, wait, yes, wait, it wait, is. Wait. Yes, it definitely yeah. is. Right. Go ahead, go ahead, Kasia. Yes, well, our energy minister today was in Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Dubai, or close by Dubai, whatever. And they were speaking about climate change and, you know, and reducing Barbados' dependence on fossil fuels and transitioning Barbados over to renewable energy. No, let me just see how much the whole Caswell interjected before I said that the Sunderland was a convenient scapegoat. I agree with that point. And in this sense as well, no way Lisa Cummings. I think that Lisa Cummings uh, has placed herself no in the same position really. Because how can you be on the international stage, right? Because everything she said on that interview, the Prime Minister said it already, right? word for word i i was interested is that i watched a video online by a guy from guyana and his name was glenn lao right and glenn lao spoke about makisal from the president from senegal right and how mm -hmm. he visited how he visited Senegal and he was made aware that Makisal, this is the same Makisal that came to Barbados. Right? I remember Kerry Simmons. Oh, look, he's with Kerry Simmons and Mia Motley and Makisal. And he came here, right? And this Makisal went back to Senegal, turned off the internet, postponed the elections, lock up the opposition members. Makisa did everything shortly after his visit to Barbados. No, it is it was is being said by Glenn Lal in, in of Guyana in this video that Makisal sold two of the biggest oil blocks in Senegal to an Australian. Hear the word an Australian mm. and quoting Glenn Lal were a con man. Right now, this specific command, right? This specific command, according to Glenn Lell, has been wrapped up in some deal with a company called BP, which is the same company, right? That Barbados has since the Myanmar administration came into power, has given the rights to drill oil of Barbados, right? The same company that the same Australian in this video, right, that Glenn Lad is speaking about, BP has the drilling rights to drill all 
off Barbados. And this, these oil arrangements to drill oil off Barbados were signed when Mia Motley was in power. Right? So we have to ask the question. If I be able to run a Maki cell on <laughs> any of the oil blocks of Barbados, because in a serious question, right? How can you be promoting climate change and reducing fossil fuel usage? And you, you all they're speaking about the Bridgestone Initiative and how you, you want bigger countries to pay us to keep our oil in the ground, but still you giving this company BP. And, and and which is involved with this Australian guy. And, and Marcia, you know what we've been hearing about the Australian and the, and, and the ownership Correct. of the Australian at the George River project. Yeah. Right? So we need to ask ourselves if this same Australian in Glenn Lau's video, which is tied up with the company BP, and the company BP, which is involved heavily with allegedly according to Glenn Lau, with Marquis Sal. And Senegal and, and our government bringing Makisal here and our government sending on the deals with the same BP oil company, right? Questions seriously need to be asked. Why really was Makisal in Barbados? Mm -hmm. right? But I, I want if you could play clip quickly. I, why, I want to show you the proof. Yeah. Um, uh, Dave, Dave has a clip there. He's going to um, play, play a bit of it. Tell us when to stop. Can't hear it. We're not hearing the audio. Yeah, but th this, is, this, this connection here is, is so important. If anybody knows of a way we can get this gentleman and Timar on the show and as well, I think, I think we could get a day and put something together i was trying today to try since yesterday to try to get him um on the program because i think there is something here kimar there's something here go ahead I went next door to senegal a west african country just a stone throw away from guyana less than three hours and bang you in africa and for some reason i will go to my grave with that particular country and its leader them had there up to last week named Mackey Saul. That man took two of the country's richest gas fields that he could have sell and take the country out of the five billion debt them had and its people out of poverty. But instead of doing that, he handed both of those oil fields to an Australian con man named Frank Timmis, who had no experience in the oil and gas business. Does that resemble Guyana with the Kaicho and Kanji oil blocks? <laughs> now, hear what went on in Senegal. That con man sold a portion of the two gas fields to an oil company and collected over 900 million US. Wait, the story ain't done there yet. He then tie up a deal with the British oil company BP for the remainder. And he set to collect 12 billion American dollar over a 40 year period. <laughs> Ah, you hear that? One foreigner, a known crook, sitting with 900 million US in his pocket, and is set to collect another 12 billion more in the next 40 years. And the whole country still sitting with a $5 billion debt and the people starving. Hear more of what happened. Later on, the country found out that the president's brother name mm. ended up being part of the company that received the sale money from the transactions. <laughs> How could you be that? 
While the embargoes moving deals with oil companies, the people in Senegal starving. That president, Macky Sall, served 12 years as president. And elections was to set or to be held before the second of April 2024 to get him out. Guess what he did? He locked up the opposition leaders and changed the election date to December 2024. <laughs> Wanted time to change the constitution so he can run again. Rig the elections and stay as president for life. But the hungry and angry population of Senegal didn't want to hear or see a bit of him anymore. They rise uh, up pause when and hit the streets uh, non-stop. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you saw what he said. He said BP, right? British Petroleum. But Barbados entered into a deal, right? With BHP, which is the Australian company, mm -hmm. right? An Australian company. So, so he remember he said that the guy is Australian, you know, right? Right. So BHP is the energy company, and you know I, I have my 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 facts to uh, present to you. So I'm going to share my screen quickly, uh, so you can see again. I uh, look who look who was up front, Kerry Simmons. Mm -hmm. Right. And remember he was there with Makisal as well. Yes. Yes. Right. So, so Carrie Simmons, as you can see the, the headline here, Barbados to offer 22 blocks to oil companies, right? This is the same climate climate change Barbados, you know. This is this is Barbados as becoming climate resilient and moving away from fossil fuels and cutting the energy bill, but still we are here offering oil blocks to people, right? So here we have Carrie Simmons saying that we're going to offer 22 oil blocks to companies, right? And it says here, Barbados has embarked on a fresh initiative to lure the world's leading energy firms to explore its waters for oil and gas. After the latest seismic study showed the possible existence of significant hydrocarbon resources. Manager of Energy Carrie Simmons said on Wednesday that the bidding process for license will start on December 1st. Woodside Energy, which was formerly BHP, now successfully completed a 2,600 square meter, square kilometer 3D seismic survey offshore Barbados in the Carolel Bay and the Bimsha blocks. And the final returns on that survey should be with us in a few months, but on the basis of previous surveys and what other information we have been able to pick up. And we felt fairly confident that no was the right time to announce the offshore licensing wrong. Right? So, so there you have it clearly. So it says there that the minister pointed out that there have been recent significant gas fines, about three to five trillion cubic feet of gas by Woodside Energy in Trinidad and Tobago adjacent deep water blocks. And with the launching of the license round, investors can now compete for the opportunity to explore oil and gas potential in the island's waters. Therefore, well, he said there is therefore an invitation extended to companies around the world who specialize in exploration that they are interested in and to nominate acreage from 22 available oil blocks and Barbados for inclusion in the bidding process which will be followed by obviously a pre-qualification stage and then final uh bidding right so that 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 was that was carrie simmons right mm -hmm. but remember marcy i keep telling you this is climate barbados you know this is right. this is remember Cap captain planet flying all over the world talking about reducing carbon footprint uh you know all of these things so i just want to show you the release from the company's website bhp's website the australian company's website right which will show you essentially uh the agreements that barbados the climate smart barbados <laughs> and i have to keep saying that all the time because i want to show you how much fraud 
and, and the thing is that they changed their name. BP now is the same name that we're signed to now, right? Woodside Energy. Right. It's the same company. Okay. But it says BHP, right? right. Barbados and BHP sign exploration licenses. And this is the company's website that, I, that I'm on. Right? They have it in Spanish. So let me change that from Spanish to English. Mm -hmm. So it's saying here that the government of Barbados today sign exploration licenses for two offshore blocks, Carlisle Bay and Bimsha. These blocks are approximately 40 kilometers southeast of the island's nation, total about 5,000 square meters and are located in waters ranging from approximately 1,200 to 2,000 meters in depth. Upon approval by the government and environmental impact assessment and environmental plan, BHP Billiton will commence the first three-year phase, which includes conducting a 2D seismic survey on the two exploration blocks. And with favorable results, BHP may enter in an optional second phase of three years to perform a 3D seismic survey, followed by an optional third phase of two years to dr drill exploration wells. At the signing, officials from both the government of Barbados and BHP spoke of the mutual benefits provided by exploration licenses. And these licenses will provide long-term benefits to the Barbadian people and BHP stakeholders alike. Right? Now, this was from when the last government was in. Right? This was this was from when the last government was in. Right? So this thing was signed by Darcy, Senator Darcy Boyce as a minister of energy. Right, but what is interesting, Marcia, about this is that the Barbados National Oil Company played a huge role in exploring some of the oil in this structure. Right, however, Lisa Cummings, Marcia, said today that 100%, right, 100% of all of Barbados's oil usage is imported, but you. Castle, you, you can remember at, at one point in time, wood burn oil fields to produce oil in Barbados. Right? You muted, you muted. I, I know, and as a matter of fact, we used to produce oil down there by the Hilton. And that is why we have a cleanup problem down there because Mobile had a refinery down there. So the poor girl didn't know what she's talking about, but she just talks. So you give her a break, you know? I, you know, you give her a break. She just um, opens her mouth and anything comes out, and it's usually foolishness. So I ain't got time to miss my head with her. We passed the time. We are 10.33. I tell the people yeah. 10.30, so we have to wrap up and pick up back on Friday. Right. Well, but I'm going to wrap up here. I could always continue this conversation another time, but this was just the beginning stages of showing you uh, essentially the ties between Barbados, Senegal, Marquisal, <laughs> possibly the, the president of Guyana, Guyana. and mm -hmm. these international oil companies because this company, BHP, which is now called Woodside Energy, we, we enter into all these exploration deals. Why, why, why wasn't this information blasted? Oh, let the whole world know that Barbados is looking for oil. Right, when Guyana was when Guyana was doing it with Exxon Mobil, right, and, and I think that the ordeal that Guyana signed with Exxon is the worst ordeal ever in the history of ordeals, right. So we have to to, to find out and wrapping up quickly what essentially Barbados signed away in these ordeals with BHP, right? Because additional oil blocks were signed were signed over, you know. Right? So. If the Guyanese government, a country as large as Guyana, with all these resources, could enter could enter into these says that two percent of all of the oil royalties will go to Guyana, imagine what Barbados will sell out for. Negative two hundred. Yep. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we are going to pick up what somebody said. I think it's Calvin said connect the dots. I feel something about this. 
and you know i've been trying to get somebody from senegal if you know i have two persons but they didn't speak english we couldn't understand each other um from the time he was here i was calling senegal we need to find somebody who can speak english <laughs> from senegal okay we need to have that and we need this guy needs man on the program we need to have a set mr franklin we need him on i think we're on to something here because Martin and that same guy and his president, they're tight, 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 tight. We need to look into this thing. And why did he come here? Why was so important for that man to come here before he left office? Remember, we were asking all of that. Something is into something. Akima, I think you're onto something really big. We're going to close because I know if I tell Mr. Franklin and then tell everybody we won't be here till 11 o'clock, right? Um, Mr. Franklin didn't eat yet. Mr. Franklin, I know you wanted something. Go ahead. I, I, I no, I, no, I was just answering Rose. She asked how much the director protocol got. She gets eleven thousand four hundred eighty-three dollars and sixty-five cents a month. That okay. would be salary of ten thousand one hundred twenty-eight dollars, and then entertainment and traveling take it up to that amount. You know, for a hairdresser, that's not doing too bad. You know, <laughs> and um, you know, but um. And again, I want to tell Rose, Rose, do not let yourself be troubled by um, um, political alchemists, more scientists. In her case, it's the same thing, but, um, you know, because if Ninja Man insults me, it would not bother me. And Ninja Woman doing it ain't gonna bother me either. Okay. All right? So. All right. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> Folks, this was a long one. This was a long one, but it was worth it. It was really, really worth it. Good night to everybody. Thank you um, so much, Mr. Glenn Murray, for coming on, Rose Carbon, um, Kimar Stewart, and those two wonderful gentlemen, James Paul and Mr. Knox. And we had also um, Rasimba reminding us about this whole thing about justice um, for the Rastafari community. Um, thanks to everybody who joined. Thanks um, to our technical um, team. Um, or was a one man, one man, Dave. <laughs> thanks to everybody. <laughs> thanks to everybody. I hope I didn't miss anybody. And of course, you wonderful, um, wonderful um, supporters. This is the Ragtime team <laughs> that's on. Thank you to everybody. And we are going to look into this thing with the water, with the water bill. Your water bill, everybody check your water bill. We're going to deal with that come Friday. Um, let's join alternate views um, on uh, Thursday, right? On Thursday, that's tomorrow. I forgot it is Thursday. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow, I thought today was Monday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday at 7 o'clock. Okay, guys, thank you all so much for joining. Bye bye. We love you all. Bye bye. Bye, bye, Rock Tag Team. English, English, English. Bye bye. English pretending to be good. I pretending to be good. Good, good, good. Just pretending to be good. I pretending to be good. Good. I just pretending to care about people. 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 Pretending. And I pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to cheer old people. I'm pretending to be good, 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 good. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. Good, 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 good. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. <laughs> Good night, 